Um, so we have no Dan Volkowski here tonight. So, uh, Todd, would you mind sitting in? Sure. Okay. This one just been as you're going through each of the different. Mm, we'll see. <clears throat> um, okay, so the uh, first. <clears throat> okay, so wait. We have a lot of public hearings tonight. This is a busy meeting. So due to the number of public hearings that we've got, and in the interest of making sure that everyone gets to make a comment that they would like, and that the applicant and the commission have adequate time to discuss, uh, please make sure that if you do come up, uh, state your name and address for the record, as as possible, uh, for or against the proposal, and why, and that's it. Uh, this is a public comment period only. Any questions will be noted by the staff and reviewed at the end of the public comment session uh, before closing the hearing. And if the applicant wishes to answer them, they're more than welcome. If they don't want to, they don't have to. Uh, if necessary, the commission will keep the public hearing open um, for further information that needs to be provided. First public hearing that we've got tonight is application 2405, Sweat Equity LLC. It's a text amendment. <coughs> Uh, section five regulation to allow permitted use of indoor sports uh, facility and self storage facility. Just for the record, this is in the same location that we had previously approved the Joneser trucking operation, and they are not going in there. So <clears throat> I'll read the legal notice, application 2405, Sweat Equity LLC, text amendment section uh, 5D2 of East Granby zoning regulation to allow permitted use for indoor sports facilities and allow for self-storage facility. Can I get a motion to open the public hearing? So moved. All those in favor? Second. 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 Second, sorry. Second. Aye. 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 Um, applicant. Up. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. My name is Dave Rax. I'm a professional engineer and principal of FA Heskett. We're located here in town. I'm here representing uh, the applicant Sweat Equity LLC. And um, as the chairman just pointed out, there's a point of uh, transparency. Uh, this is focused for our purposes on the, uh, on the parcel marks uh, open area where they used to have the uh, car shows. And we spent a great deal of time with the Planning uh, Commission and Planning and Zoning Commission to get uh, the Jonesers application approved. And unfortunately, given the financial world that we're all living in right now, uh, that project is not going to move forward because of that reason. So, um, Sweat Equity, which is Anthony Malucci, Anthony lives in town. And um, he was the applicant and is the developer of the facility uh, over on Connecticut South. And about 90% completed or so, and uh, we'll wrap that up in the next 30 days or so. Uh, but anyhow, this is a text amendment which would apply to all of the uh, parcels of land that are in the uh, transitional zone. And what we're asking you to do is to um, add two uh, permitted uses. One would be an indoor recreational sports training facility, which is a lot of words, but basically it could be, as staff pointed out, it could be something as simple as a large bubble. But in this case, we would be, we would be looking at building a building of around 40,000 square feet. These things are becoming more and more popular in, uh, in not only surrounding towns here, but all over the country. These are uh, training facilities, mostly for children, uh, specializing in sports. So in this case, uh, Ms. Pindalucci is looking at doing some ice training, um, focusing on uh, goalie training. So, uh, so they're going to have an ice rink in there? That would be a partial ice rink. It, the building gets divided up into multiple sure. uses, you know, so you'll have like an all-purpose field. Uh, and these things are necessary uh, today uh, because uh, of our lousy weather. So it's, 
if you want to train, you know, a lot of the kids are training for one or two sports for the entire year. You can't really do an outside training sport uh, or an ice training sport without having an enclosed facility. So these are becoming very, very popular. Um, obviously, the commission you know, would review it under full site plan application. Uh, the other thing is to go ahead and codify the, uh, the indoor self-storage facility because in this case, there might be an opportunity to do some mixed use on this property where some additional self-storage facility was added along with the indoor recreational training. As staff pointed out, uh, the commission had ruled uh, in the past um, that self-storage fit under the warehousing and distribution kind of definition as other similar use. But in this case, we we felt it was uh, a good opportunity to get it into the regulation so that it's clear as to what the intent was. So that indoor self storage facility, we had asked that you add that as well as a permitted uh, use in that zone. And that's pretty much it. Um, again, the top, the the the, the, uh, the ordinance, the way it's written right now, talks about passive recreation and active recreation and things of that nature, but. Moving forward, we didn't want to get into this situation where the commission had to make a, you know, clarification of a definition or, you know, that, that type of thing. So in this case, it's specifically an indoor recreational sports training facility would be a permitted use subject to commission approval. And that's about it. Uh, you have your staff report and uh, <coughs> answer any questions. Um, yeah, because this is not a site plan or anything like that. We have more. No, it's not, not anywhere. Nowhere near that. Yeah. <clears throat> I think that's pretty clear. Does anybody. Uh, anybody have any questions regarding that? Anybody got this in? Yeah, I would. Um, so, keeping the uh, the Rainbow Road corridor to avoid self storage facilities that are fronting on that, um, to avoid bubbles um, on that. Uh, you know, if you're talking properties. Um, if we were to limit it to properties that didn't have access, or if we limited it to a certain setback distance from Route 20, I could see that. Um, it's certainly not against the idea of indoor recreation sports training facilities, but I think it would have to be a minimum acreage per site, um, and that would have to be stipulated in the um, as would any kind of, you know, not. Uh, not from the state highway that would have to be in the regulation, correct, Robin? If that's what you guys wanted. Well, I'm just, I'm just saying for the purposes of. Well, the size of the building is already regulated to some degree by the size of the plot that it's on anyway, right? Yeah. The coverage and stuff that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> and anyone from the public here to speak for or against? If there's nobody uh, in the public interested in making a comment one way or the other, then I guess we can close the public hearing. Yeah, well, I'm going to just briefly read my staff report in, which will okay. touch on the so crowd quotes okay. as well. Um, so obviously the two plan submissions for the land use application and the text amendment language. Um, so this text amendment proposes to add two uses to the allowable use table in the Commerce Park Transition Zone. The two uses requested are indoor recreational sports training facilities and indoor self-storage facilities. In reviewing the current uses in that zoning district, mm -hmm. indoor sports recreational Indoor recreational sports training facilities are similar in nature to active recreational amenities, which is allowed in the zoning district. Indoor recreational sports training facilities can be less impactful than the activities that take place 
because the activities take place inside a building or bubble. I did reference the bubble because many of them are those blow up uh, mm -hmm. bubble type buildings. The second use proposed is indoor self storage facilities. This use has come up in a previous application where the commission approved it as a other similar use to warehousing. The Commerce Park Transitional Zone does allow for warehousing and distribution. This use, indoor self-storage, would be a less intrusive use in the tr uh, transition zone and does not generate noise and traffic truck that a traditional warehouse or distribution center would generate. The text amendment was referred to CROG. CROG had no issues with the proposal. Um, and then, um, obviously, if the commission chooses to approve this text amendment, either with revisions or modifications to the language, staff would request an effective date of 15 days after the date of public hearing of the legal notice. Um, I would recommend before you close the public hearing, if the commission wants to at least um, talk about the three issues that John brought up, and if that's something that the other commission members would want to consider, you um, have the applicant here so you can engage in conversation if you wanted to make changes or add something to it. Um, otherwise, once you close it, you cannot have those conversations with the applicant after the fact. So I guess I'll start the conversation. I wrote down the notes. Um, anyone else feel that they would not want to see this in the transition zone if it's on a uh, state highway? Uh, where does the transition zone start again? Um, so it's uh, right where East Street is, yes. and it goes down to just past where the gateway properties are. It's a very small area. Yeah. <clears throat> And um, Mr. Vinsunis owns um, a large portion of the properties that are on the north side of it, along with the two gateway properties on the south side of it, in the transition zone along Route 20. <coughs> yeah, I would be for that, for John's idea. I'm, uh, I'm generally interested in not trying to impede people's rights to do what is legally available for them to do in the properties that they have. Um, I don't see that as a, a large area where something like this is going to be very intrusive. <clears throat> um, so I would tend to uh, leave that open to the transition zone. So to clarify, though, right now it's not legal, right? Right. This text amendment would be right. making it. Would be making it legal. Mm -hmm. Right. So. Bring it into the property and tell them. You said so, it's really So this is a text this, amendment, and it can apply to anywhere in the transition, transition zone. So I, I don't want anyone to get confused. They, they have a specific it's property in mind, but it's it, it will be applicable to any property in the transition yeah, somewhere zone. Somewhere along the 20th. Including along Route 20, the way it is written, correct? So that it, I'm sorry, looking at a bubble, a sports facility, parking bubble. Or a building. They, they, they indicated not. they would yeah. be looking more towards a building than a bubble. I think the bubble's more cost effective. Well, if you were to agree that it isn't desirable to have on the state highway gateway to the community, you could change the proposed text amendment to state not something on the highway and based on what you think the applicant might be thinking in their near future, you're certainly not impacting them the way you're interpreting the contract. So on the highway, whatever the roads are out there. And if some later point in time that someone comes through and they decide that the best use for property on Route 20 is self-storage or another sports training facility, they could come before the commission to revise with the regulation that would you know, prohibit. Right. On, we've been down on, that road a few highway. times. So. And we have done that. But we have done that. We, we have... It also is in in my mind. Cautiously proceeded. And right. then, and I'm, then I'm not. I'm not saying that I would not. I would not agree with you on this. But what I am saying is that <clears throat> when we've done this in the past before, it appears that that is enough of a roadblock to keep somebody from looking at that area of East Granby for doing a development. 
frog, frog uh, park and just looking at someplace else where they don't have to go through that process to go for a change and go through that whole effort and everything uh, where it's already in regulation someplace else and they can just slide right in, uh, take care of it. And um, as far as the populace in that area, it's equally as good for them and the project that they want to do. Again, I just would say that, you know, is that the type of permitted use do you want on the state highway as you come to the field? Are we limiting self-storage also? Um, I mean, I'd rather see a facility, sports facility than a self-storage facility in one, so you, especially you, transitionally. You could take up both of those. You could add language for either it applies to both, not on a state right. highway or one or the other. That is completely up to you guys. Um, I will say to answer your question, Route 20 is the only state highway in the transition zone. So effectively, you would just be saying we don't want to see it on the properties that are fronting right. in the transitional zone on Route 20. Um, just to add from, you know, we did this whole village center study. The transition zone was included in that village center study. Um, we don't have that many properties. Um, again, I, I mentioned one of our biggest property owners who owns most of the property that fronts on Route 20. Um, I don't know that either of those uses would be um, rather appropriate considering what came out of our Village Center study with the transition zone uses next to it. I think, um, again, even though it's a text amendment, knowing the area and our other, we do have other properties that this could be applicable to um, and the transition zone could be very favorable for those other properties. So um, I don't think limiting it to properties that are not fronting on a state highway limits people's ability to do this and would still provide it to land in appropriate areas in that zoning district. There has been talk about putting something in, I put across from, well, it's the shopping center here, center shops. Probably because there, I thought one time was trying to put a sports facility. We've actually had interest, not from this particular applicant, but um, from someone who was in an adjacent town wanting to do a sports complex and indoor sports facility. So there actually has been interest. It wasn't even on this property, but coincidentally was on a different property in the transition zone. Um, so there is interest in this. Um, is that I, property on Route 20? It is not, actually. Um, so. I, I think that the, these are two uses that um, could go into these areas and not front on Route 20 and be successful. These uses are allowed in Commerce Park A, correct, right now? Um, I don't. The, so Commerce Park A, you guys did the self-storage because we have a language about other similar uses, and that was the how they came in under other similar uses. The sports uh, facility, I don't think we have language specific to sports facilities. So if I remember, I used to, 20 years ago, there was a indoor sports facility on the I, Park Road. I don't know if yeah, soccer. you guys remember that. You guys been oh, yeah. long enough yeah. to yeah. remember that. Oh, that. Yeah. Standard. yeah, it was two soccer fields in there, but it was on Bradley Park Road and it was off the state highway in Commerce Park. The for the uh, windmills there. Yeah. It, it might have fallen under commercial recreation. It's kind of like a overly broad term. It could have come in under that, uh, what you're speaking of, and I have heard about that. Someone had brought that to my attention a while back in a conversation. Um, minimum acreage, I mean, that's completely up to you. You can our bulk, bulk and area requirements um, sort of take into account. Your coverage takes into account how big of a building can go on a site, how it can be situated on a site. Um, I think when you have more intrusive uses, like warehousing and distribution, um, sometimes you want minimum acreages, especially in a transition zone. I don't know that these would be that intrusive, um, that you would have to do that, but that's certainly something that you guys could consider adding in if you wanted to. I guess what I'm, what I'm going after that, Rob, mm -hmm. is, um, I have no problem with any of these facilities, but over in... East Windsor is across the bridge. There's the bubble and then associated uh, fields with yep. that. And then if you go down on the Portland, uh, Glastonbury line, 117, um, Oakland has a couple of yep. 
very nice uh, field and with also, also the yep. facility there. Um, so that you know, there's kind of a difference between what we're hearing the defense staff might be looking to do on assume that's on Russell Road. Mm -hmm. um, there's a big difference between that and those types of things, but if this is sitting there in our regulations, those are those are uses that could come to our community. We could be entertaining someone such as the applicant in Windsor Locks that recently got mm -hmm. relatively recently got shot down. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that was my only thing with the you know either a, a minimum or a maximum uh, site for, for that. Um, and then my last comment on this application would be, um, I think it's good to get the indoor self storage facility language in rather than have what we had. And I did not support mm -hmm. the, uh, the application on Connecticut Drive South because it did not specifically delineate <laughs> This particular type of use. So, if 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 it is a use that the commission and the town thinks is appropriate, then it should it should say what it is. Mm -hmm. and, you know, the whole self storage facility, what it is. Yeah. yeah. No, I agree. So I don't have a problem with the, with that. Um, but again, I wouldn't want either of these two uses to have actual funding. I think to just add to the conversation about minimum acreage, I just pulled up the GIS so I could take a look at not just this property, but some other properties. And mm -hmm. I mean, you could do a five minimum uh, acreage minimum, and that pretty much covers most of our property in the transition. So if you wanted to add those two things in, and we can have any issue to adding those two things in, it doesn't affect their proposal long term, but. It is their text amendment, so. Yeah. Well, I understand the, the concerns. This is our town, too. So. Um, and since for selfish reasons, um, <laughs> it's, it's OK with us. Uh, if that's the way the commission wants to go, if you don't want these on Route 20, then as a friendly amendment, we will accept that. Um, okay. I'm not so sure about the minimum of acreage and everything. I mean, let's get to much into the lines, you know. Yeah, uh, let's get pretty specific. But um, if, if you <clears throat> basically, uh, you know, prohibited along Route 20, um, I think that covers the concerns. The rest of the site plan approval and what makes sense. But we'll, we would accept that friendly amendment. Any other discussion matters yes. before you guys close? Okay. Uh, can I get a motion? Motion to close. Second. I'll second it. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Moving on to application <clears throat> 2406. Where did my public... Where did they go? I just had that. Public notice. Where is it? Mm -hmm. okay. Well, okay. What are they doing with it? The legal notice. I had a whole thing of legal notice. You want me to read? I have it on my yeah, screen. Yeah, I, okay. yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll spare they, you the you found found it. It. Okay. Uh, application 2406K, uh, SFR, East Granby Owner LLC, special permit site plan approval for East Granby Meadows, Bramble Bush Circle, Briarwood Circle, Old Deerfield Circle for construction of 48 single family units. <clears throat> um, I get a motion to open 
public hearing on 2406. Okay. A second? I'll second. All those in favor? I had tiger. Opposed? Okay. Um, is he tonight? Yeah. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. My name is Dave Zayax. I'm a professional engineer and principal with FA Husket, the located here in town. Uh, with me this evening are the uh, principals of the applicant, uh, Reggie Constat, Perry Gold, Mark Klingerman are here. Right here. Um, they are currently uh, have what we call the first phase, which is the ramble, uh, under construction, which are driven by. You can see that they're fully engaged in construction. Uh, can we put up that first uh, slide? Just the, um, the reason why you have me again here tonight instead of Guy Heskett, who did the first phase, is because Guy unfortunately got called away on a family emergency in Ohio. So you have Dave Zayak tonight, the Dave Zayak show tonight. <laughs> uh, is this what you want to say? Yeah, that's, okay. that's just to show everybody. That's uh, that's the 32 sheet set of drawings that was submitted. It's called the East Grandview Meadows, which is really the second phase of development on this property. Uh, put on the second one, which is the uh, aerial plan. Let's see how all this works. And this is a uh, application for a special permit for what we're calling phase two of the multifamily development in the MFRD zone. Um, on the top half of that page is the Bramble Bush Village that you folks approved uh, almost a year ago. And uh, it's currently under construction. Um, that included. Uh, a single driveway out to East Street, and uh, in the center there, there was where the community center was going to be in the pool, pickleball courts, I think a dog uh, walking park, things of that nature are in the center of that development, and that's under construction right now. Tonight, we're here to look at what we're calling East Granby Meadows, which is the southerly portion of the property. Um, these would be all rental homes. Um, it'd be a mix of three and four bedroom units. And uh, there would be a second driveway at the south end of the site out on the east uh, street. Um, all of the roads as it, um, in phase two, just like they were in phase one, were constructed primarily a, a number of years ago now. And all the utilities are in place, uh, water and sewer, and actually a lot of the electrical system and gas lines are in there already. So those are all the little white pipes that have been sticking out of the ground for the last 15 or 20 years. This uh, parcel, the two parcels were combined uh, back when we did phase one. So the overall parcel for all the analysis is 54.94 acres. And um, so we are following, we're gonna continue to follow that roadway network without uh, any significant changes. And uh, so basically we're here to ask for approval of the 48 single homes. As you know, the, the first phase are duplex homes. Uh, these would be standalone homes similar to the development directly across the street on the east side of East Street. It would have that sort of same feeling as, as those homes across the street. Um, if you're looking at the zoning data table, um, by calculation, there are 42.49 acres of what we find as buildable area on the property that deducts wetlands and the like in the uh, calculations. So that translates into the whole project combined 3.86 acres. And the regulations allow up to four acres of density, uh, or four units per, per acre in density. So we're uh, comfortably below the four acres. Um, by your zoning regulations, the parking requirements would be 408 spaces for the entire uh, development. And we're at 300, uh, 468 spaces are proposed. And uh, the way that breaks down is there's 164 garage spaces, there's 164 driveway parking spaces outside the garage. And then we've scattered around 107 standard on-site parking spaces for visitors and extra cars. Uh, now we have to include, we included 28 EV parking spaces, that's now a requirement. Uh, the way the new units are going to be constructed is there'll be the capacity in those units to add an EV plug in the garage as that demand continues to grow, maybe. Uh, but the, the, the units are going to be constructed such that we could add those extra EV plugs if necessary. And then we have five additional handicapped parking spaces 
uh, scattered around in appropriate locations to uh, deal with the ADA uh, requirements. Um, as staff pointed out in their um, memo to you, all the other bulk zoning requirements are met uh, for both this phase and the combined phases. Um, the tenant amenities that were established in phase one uh, will be shared by these folks as well. Uh, we're trying to build a community, a walking community here. There's an extensive internal sidewalk system throughout this property. And then we're putting uh, sidewalks on our frontage with the anticipation that as the commercial property on the corner gets developed, the sidewalks will continue down and then connect into the whole Route 20 corridor and then the development across the street that uh, will eventually be established. And then we can start bringing in some walkability to this, to this area. So that's an important uh, consideration here. Um, all of the roadways, the sidewalks, and the sanitary sewer on the property will be private. Uh, a lot of the utilities were going to be public when this thing was originally approved years ago, but uh, we've converted it all to private. Uh, the only thing public on the property uh, for utilities will be the water main is will be um, owned by the MDC, and of course the other utility, you know, other source of the gas uh, other, other utilities. But the uh, so all the roadways, the sidewalks, the amenities, uh, and the sewer system will be now maintained by the new owners. Uh, we have an extensive landscape plan. If you had an opportunity to look in the plans, uh, sheets LS1 and LS4, uh, it's uh, been mimicked but we're from phase one. So this, this whole site will be very extensively landscaped. So uh, completed. Uh, there is going to be a dedication of conservation area. Basically, that area uh, that is uh, still partially wooded. Uh, where it says East Granby Meadows on that photo, that's going to be put into conservation uh, as part of the, uh, you know, the final approval process. Uh, Inland Wetlands Commission approved the project on May 1st. During that time, there was extensive reviews of you know, the environmental aspect of this and also wondering the permit. It's somewhat upgraded from what was originally approved because the design standards have changed in the last 15, 20 years. Uh, and we have the latest uh, report from your town engineer, uh, dated actually today, where uh, they've indicated that uh, all of their uh, comments uh, have been addressed, and they listed uh, 19 conditions that they recommend, which are from what I looked at for it's pretty much now becoming the standard conditions for site plan approvals here in town. There's nothing unusual in that list. Um, the town, and town planners report uh, listed the uh, nine special considerations that are required um, with a special permit. Um, I'll just mention them here. Um, so I'm happy to answer questions that any of the commission members might have regarding this matter, but there are nine specific criteria. Uh, very quickly, uh, is the suitable location for, use for the activity, and uh, this property is already zoned for MFRD. It has previous approvals for multifamily and single-family detached housing, and the property is located to other similar residential zoning area, so it seems to be appropriate. Uh, suitable structures for use or activity. The property is in the multifamily district. This is a mixture of building types like we. We talked about like, to the north is a duplex type of uh, design, and then this design is the of the seat. They're going to look like traditional colonial style single family homes, so we have a nice mix. Uh, all of the dimensional standards and bulk standards have been met. Uh, neighborhood number three is neighborhood compatibility. Uh, this, pro this property is located across the street from a similar development, similar density. Uh, so there's no incompatibility. Uh, suitable access and parking. Uh, everything has been designed in accordance with town standards. And uh, there, uh, and again, this was uh, previously approved by the commission, the roadway network that we're going to continue to use. Uh, suitable streets for the user activity is number five. And uh, as stated, the road has been previously been graded and prepared uh, in accordance with the uh, town standards. Adequate emergency access, we have two uh, full access points, two East Street 
The entire project is looped through private roadways and private sidewalks. Uh, adequate number seven is adequate public utilities. We have public utilities serving project of town sewer and NBC water and all the other utilities. Number eight was environmental protection and conservation. Uh, as pointed out by staffs, uh, by arithmetic, 80% of the site is in open space areas. And the clearing that is associated with this development was basically completed by the prior developer. This was reviewed extensively by your wetlands commission and approved back in May. <laughs> Number nine is consistent with purposes in the plan of conservation and development. And as uh, pointed out, this development of housing diversity is listed in the East, East Granby plan of conservation development. Additional multifamily housing options in East Granby are limited and none readily available. Uh, as none have been built in many years. So uh, this uh, development as a whole will address that uh, limitation that exists now in town. Um, and in the planning uh, staff uh, memo, there's a five additional comments or, or conditions, which again are, have become pretty standard now in town. Any such, uh, so in summary, this is uh, phase two of an overall comprehensive master plan. Uh, it's offering uh, housing diversity here. Uh, it is an all rental project, uh, which is becoming extremely popular throughout Connecticut and elsewhere around the country, addressing uh, needs for new homes. Uh, it, is, uh, it is a walkable community. There are sidewalks provided throughout the development that were shared amenities package that both sides uh, will use. Uh, appropriate conservation has been set aside. Um, traffic situation has been dealt with. The OSTA reviewed by your staff. They're not really changing at all the access points that have already been established onto uh, the street. And uh, in summary, it seems like a very exciting project, and uh, uh, we hope that you uh, will approve it. I mean, this hasn't really changed from when they first came and said, this is what we're thinking for the phase exactly. two. Exactly. Uh, this is the master plan that was you know, talked about for phase, during phase one. Right. Mm -hmm. and as seen as Welling Homes, is it means just like the Bramble one where it's owned by one owner, yes. takes care of the ground, and everything and they and they and they under the ownership. Uh, mm -hmm. And these are, this is the new, uh, to be honest with you, we're doing a lot of this in our office. Rental housing is a big thing right now. Especially, you know, full-size homes. The thought of renting a full-size home. It's very exciting to people. Is Schoolhouse Landing the same thing? Or? No. Oh, no. Okay. no. Those are all individual. Those are all, yeah. Right. So, I mean, clearly a big difference here as far as the town is concerned is that oh, yeah. this is taxed to the corporation. Yeah. They're not individual yep. residences. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yes. So I remember when we were, you know, going forward with phase one, we were, um, there was some concern uh, about East Street uh, ingress, egress, uh, and I can't remember what we ended up with uh, on phase one. So we're just going out from a stop sign. There's no you know, flashing light or anything of that nature. And so the ingress, egress uh, for phase two, which is, I guess, directly across from Harvest Lane. Yeah, I believe it's a movie. And that'll just be a stop yeah. to you. Will it be a, like a bumble strip or something to, to make sure people actually stop? Will it be a, you know, like a speed bump to make sure that people will actually stop coming in? It's a, it's a bona fide intersect, maybe a T intersection. So I, well, I get that, but will people actually Wait, stop? You mean stop on the... On coming out and, and then coming on the east, east street granby meadows side because you clearly can't do that on on east street i'm concerned with the traffic nice well going simple out. intersection with the stop sign that people have to stop if they don't they're different than any other intersection or accident is there a slotted amount of ADA units that are being built, or are they being they can be conformed? 
Yeah, uh, transformed, I should say. Pretty much all the units are accessible. Yeah. I mean, it has a grade, right? Yeah, so there's there's, there's uh, 14 primary unit uh, primary bedroom downs. So on right. those two, 14 right. would be primary down the first floor. Like if you had somebody come in, you can do knockout to kitchen cabinets and all that stuff. We, we have, yeah, like I said, we have 14 units on the first floor. But I love the things that are super accessible. Use it. Gotcha. That general caters to the demographic. So we like doing it. Right. Uh, right. As they were pointing out, there's, there's a number of units at the master bedroom on the first, on the first floor. Right. I saw that on the plans. Yeah. They're not, but they're not ADA. They are accessible. They're accessible. They're accessible they're they have. They're not doing the countertops and things like they that. They can do. They, they have to. Do it if they wanted to, to, anything can be modified. <clears throat> there's a whole bunch of building codes that need to be dealt with. <clears throat> I personally like the Oh, you need the exercise. I get plenty of <laughs> you get the stairs. Um, the word with the phase one. This will get rid of all the main pipes sticking out of the ground. That'd be nice. The tube fine. Now, with this development, how much, what percentage of this is going to be compared to just the single homes? I, mean, I was looking at the regs here that multifamily dwelling units should not exceed 33%. I'm sure we're still low. Well. Oh, you mean overall? So yeah, we haven't updated that section of the regulations, but Public Act 2129 got rid of the cap that communities can put on percentage caps for multifamily okay. dwellings. So you actually, that is moot. You can't do it anyway. We will be making that change as we yeah. go through the regulations, but it no longer applies. And you are nowhere near that, so. I didn't think yeah. so. Yeah, I don't think we were. But it's a good way. question. <laughs> Credit for this, I think it's needed. Um, I guess we can open this up to public comment now. Anybody um, for or against? Okay. Uh, before we close the public hearing, Robin, did you want to go over? Yeah, I'm not going to read my entire staff report because okay. Dave just read it about 40% um, of it. <laughs> of it. Um, but just as a recap, so we did look at a, a lot of this um, in phase one because they did anticipate the phase two and so the zoning table is identical to what you guys saw during phase one because they had already incorporated in knowing that they were going to be doing a uh, phase two section of this um, what you see in the phase two is actually um, the layout is exactly as was approved pre by the previous developer which is why the roadway system isn't changing it's why the utilities aren't changing um, they are doing some minor updates to the drainage system and sedimentation basins, right. as Dave said, which went through wetlands. Um, so, you know, overall, pretty much exactly what you guys saw last June, just making it coming in and being official. So obviously it meets kind of conservation and development, um, obviously previously approved development. I think multiple iterations of it, it had come back a couple of mm -hmm. times as a few different things. Yep. Um, so appropriate for the site and the zoning district, um, and their application um, is complete. It went through a couple of revisions with myself and our town engineer. Um, I did do a um, motion for you guys. As always, I prepared them in the affirmative, not to be presumptuous of what how you guys are going to vote, but because that's the right way to do motions. Um, and so you have my five conditions, which the condition number five, just for clarity, um, includes any conditions from our town engineer. So anything in his memorandum to you would be pulled over and based on the final approval letter. Okay. I guess one more. Um, this is not section eight housing at all. It's not going to be part of housing. It's all market rate. No. It's all market rate. It's all market, it's all market rate. rate. Okay. Yeah. Just in the future as well, though, you really can't ask that question. That's actually against fair housing. Um, can't treat it differently, so it's not ask. 
if someone was coming in with like an 830G application, you're obviously going to know that that's affordable housing. But to ask that difference differentiation as part of a regular thing, it's not something you can really do. Strike that. Strike that. Strike that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just curious. I, was, I, I know. I, I get it. I totally understand. No, I, understand. I yeah. think technically affordable. Yeah. Um, I don't think we, there, last of all. But. I think probably just not asking the question unless it's offered up is probably the right approach. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, you know, can't choose it. For right. <laughs> um. In that case, uh, can I get a motion to close the public hearing? Make a motion to close the hearing at 2426. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Moving on to application 2407. I'll read the uh, legal notice. It's Rainbow <laughs> Development. <laughs> to section 5D2F and 5D5F of these grant planning and zoning to allow for drive through establishments within the Commerce Park A transitional zone. <clears throat> uh, may I get a motion to open this public hearing? Uh, I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Oh. So, good evening, uh, Mr. Chair, members of the Commission, Record, uh, and the yeah. applicant. Um, just a quick housekeeping thing. It was my understanding that Mr. O'Connor was going to refuse himself and remove himself in the dais for this proceeding. Nope. I would ask uh, formally for the record that he do that, and I would object strenuously to him proceeding. Matter and he's written um, some uh, posts on social media that call into question his ability to um, um, act fairly on this application. And I think for the benefit of the commission, uh, Mr. Chairman, we should ask him to refuse himself. Uh, I would. I think that that would make things go a lot smoother. It would uh, not open up. The commission to an appeal process that could be very unsightly, and we do have a um, alternate here that can sit in for you just fine. All right, so I got the request, and looking over the statutes and the case law, I don't feel that what you presented rises to that level. Uh, I mean, just reading here. So even as a courtesy, you're not just going to. No, I think it was. I think it would set a bad set. precedent for me to recuse myself. So does staff have copies of his comments on social media? I can bring it up um, if you give me a moment. Even the appearance of a copy is very disturbing for this condition. So are you? What are you alleging? Are you alleging a conflict of interest? I'm alleging you rejected the application because you've made statements. Predetermination That's correct. is what you're going by. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you're saying an appearance? I'm saying the mere appearance should be enough that this commission would ask them to refuse himself. That's not what the law says. I'm very familiar with the law. Are you an attorney? I'm looking at it right now. Okay. Are you an attorney, sir? I've been practicing this area for 40 years. Okay. So is this, this, is this... Are we going to argue about this? or It sounds like you're arguing. I mean... You're the one you want... Are you going to recuse yourself or not? I'm not going to refuse myself. Ultimately, okay. right I'm now... I'm going to request that you recuse yourself. And if, I'm if going I can, to right. say no. Can we stop for just one second? And I'll just add, first of all, read the post. Read the so post that the post is in the record. And then... The town attorney has weighed in on this. I will let the commission know what the town attorney said, um, and then you all can decide what you want to do from there. Um, What's the date of this? The date of the post. I actually don't have the date of the post. Um, I think it was between our last It looks day. like. Oh, so this, no, we've been on the board. Okay. May 17th, it looks like. Um, so, this, so this is um, Brian tagging someone named Justin or. Part of a broader more, conversation. More cares that I 
Zeki, I'm probably killing that name. It is absolutely true. PNC just voted down a change in zoning regulations that would have allowed for fast food drive throughs along Route 20 into the center of town, my vote being one of the no's. Next month, though, on June 11th, the same developer with the same plan is giving it another try. It's really important that the residents attend these meetings and make their voices heard. The future of what kind of town we all live in depends on it. Economic development is often used as a euphemism for Taco Bell and fertilizer factories around here. That was posted in email to, or just, what was it on social media? It was on social media. It was actually part of a broader conversation with another member of this commission, just pointing that out. So this, this was in regards to the budget and I had made a comment saying we need more development. I did not specifically specifically point out anything, that anything on going on. Well, what you said was that this commission votes down all economic development. No, what I said is only one eighth of the people show up. Can you pull up your comment? Well, apparently it's gone now. Did you delete it? The post is gone because you deleted your comments. But my post, comment was under your comment. The post is gone. You, you didn't tag. Me. All right, so we're getting bogged down. So ultimately, like to ultimately what comments. I will say is this. Our ta presenting. Hold on, hold on. Our town attorney did reach out to Ryan mm -hmm. and had a conversation. It is the town attorney's recommendation that he recuse himself. Ultimately, it is up to you as a member. I will, as staff say, though, to Carl's point, there is precedent that says even the appearance of a predetermination or biased is enough to overturn a decision or, or or bring it back to the commission. So as long as everybody understands that if the vote tonight is something that either they don't like or somebody else doesn't like, it could be opening the door to an appeal that otherwise you may not be opening the door to because it is a text amendment and they're not easily appealable. So I think that's just a cautionary statement. It was our attorney's recommendation that you recuse yourself. That was his mm -hmm. recommendation. I don't think that that's too much to ask at all. And that we have an alternate right here. I, I just don't see this as a big thing to dial. Why? I don't understand why this is such an issue with you. Well, because, so reading this, okay? I'm not going to. Right here. The law does not require that members of zoning commissions must have no opinion concerning the proper development of their communities, which is what this is, right? We're talking about a zoning change that's going to allow for fast food. I think the issue is, Ryan, the application had been submitted. It was received before your comment, and you specifically commented on this application. I didn't comment on the you, application. You did. I, we just read it. You like I said, did. that's part of a broader conversation. The plan. I understand what you're saying, but you did specifically mention mm. this application, I and it mention, was received. I didn't mention. You said drive-through application that was denied, and it's I did not for, say application. I didn't say application. I said plan. Plan referring to opening it up for fast food. It's part of a broader conversation. You can take one comment of a broader conversation. I don't think this is really setting a precedent if you just agree to ground yourself and let us speak to it. When this has never happened before. So it's not like this is something that you're, you know, you're making a big stand on that we run into all the time. Well, so and here's the thing. If, if another, we never had, the only time we've ever had somebody recuse themselves is when they personally knew the applicant. Right at this point, so right. that's that's a grounds for recusal. I beg to differ. I probably over twenty something years, I probably recused myself at least a dozen times. Yeah. And I've so been in any time prior, this is more absolute. You know, um, anything from uh, any time Shipman and Goodwin came before. Yeah, that's what I mean. I recused myself because my wife is a partner. Right. Law firm. That's what I'm referring um, to. When uh, Bill Wilson came one time, I recused myself because Bill Wilson's friend of mine, Bill Wilson, donated the tree that's buried in honor of my daughter. It's out back. Um, I recused myself when applicants have come. I can give you a million reasons. The reason one recuses oneself is either a financial or a personal. 
connection to the application. Um, Carl, I'm not, I'm not going to get into the, the bias prejudging thing, but I'm sitting next to someone who also prejudges. We made statements just in the last application that would, you know, could be construed to, as a predetermination. Could be. The threshold could not be. Appear. And, and, you know, you've got that throughout. And then you've also got that whole thing about we're elected, and I don't campaign much anymore because I don't care if you had elected or reelected. But people go out and they make statements that are similar, I'm sure, to what well, Mr. O'Connor said. Applications are pending. This is the control. And, and well, that's the thing. Carl. I have no idea whether or not Mr. O'Connor was, in fact, directly commenting as to the application that we're going to hear in a couple of minutes. He mentioned something that would allow a Taco Bell. I mean, how clear can it possibly be? I didn't mention application. So anyway, I think the fact that the town attorney is making this a suggestion. I just wrote it. I mean, you should try this. Can we recess for 30 seconds? Sure. Thank you. That's too much. 30 seconds. My issue is, if I say something else comes up with fast food, do I have to recuse myself every single time? Something comes up. No, it's this very specific entity. Oh, why? Why is this different? I don't mention the application. It's it's because of the specificity in your Facebook post. You don't mention him, but you say PZC voted down a change in the zoning regulations that would have allowed for fast food job was oh. the center of town. My vote being no. Next month, though, on June 11th, the same developer with the same plan is giving another try, and then you go on specific. to say. That's really specific, Brian. That's not really specific. Mm. Here's my, here's that's my not specific. Answer. If it were to go down. <laughs> it the door for an appeal. Okay. That's a lot of money for the town to spend when yeah. you could simply recuse yourself and let Austin sit in on the application. Mm -hmm. It could still go down in a three-three vote, but it won't. You will not have opened the door to an appeal. That's all I'm saying. It's better for other trying to stop my Get it? I need to drink a water. Drink a water. I get it. Yeah. For example. Proposed to I get a water bottle in my car because they have the right. Like they have, they have the right to. I think it's still a special permit. They, they can, but we still have to prove it. Look into that. Okay. In the future, sometimes I think our town each of the zones be here. And we'll allow under special permit. That's what I think. Because they'll say no. <laughs> no, no. Like, oh, yes, I think it's a particular instance. It didn't pass last time. Yeah. Uh, okay. There's a tie. And I lose. I, okay. I don't want to lead you the wrong way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. Yeah. Uh, the green kids. <laughs> Good. Good. We're going to see them next month. They're going to be out there. Uh, no, they're coming. Uh, my son in law's sister did marry me. Okay. So their aunt is getting married. So there are Haley. Matt and the kids are all coming oh, from Pennsylvania. So and it happens to be the same time in Charlottesville, Virginia, to see family. So we'll stop in in Pennsylvania for a day or two, play with the kids, yeah. and get back in the car and drive. So, sorry, I don't know. I don't hear you. But for this, I'm, right? I'm finishing the You know what is being. Skyline drive. Changed because it looks like this is all what we were talking about last time. Yeah, every time we go there. So they were just getting to 25 miles out. Difference from this time last time, if so it only applies to one. Right now, Mr. Ventrunas is three on a state highway. They're basically like for five miles. Yeah, yeah, radius and stuff like that. Only one one. No, you only one of the three that he has. Okay, but then again. So you only count it only by, by, by you know, know the first version. Yeah. You can put it on each of the three parcels. Yeah. So, so and over four thousand. Yeah. Yeah. 
It wouldn't apply like across from liquor cabinet and it wouldn't apply. So would they have to and then the speed limit is twenty five miles an hour. Or they can just over to the special room which kind of things would be for no just this, and then road I've ever ridden a bicycle. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Don't jiggle. Okay. So, okay. I don't know. I just go along the like, my job. It's, it's hard to rank at that point. I don't think I'm ready. I mean, I got the car, but I also get the logistics of it. Yeah, yeah he's just shown me the car for two years. Not all the lights on. You need an offer of that? I don't know why. Um, there should be a source as to what he's saying. I can tell you. Exactly. Otherwise, he should. Because he's still rapping, and this is what we do. All right. All right. We'll get to that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. But when it comes to okay. it, we're all on the same page with that. That's just like where we trust him. Okay. So that he's not. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. We'll be doing that. Are you calling We're back in session, yes. All right. So just to say to everybody, a lot of. Consternation. I reduce myself. Thank you. Austin, would you sit in for Brian? Yes. Mr. Chairman, I think this is probably one of the things that's up because when I ever refuse myself and when I got as well, he left the room. I don't have a problem if he stays, but I think Mr. O'Connor should remove himself from the desk. Yeah. So Brian has to take a seat in the house. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Carl. Appreciate it. All right, so um, that was where we left off. This is our, our second application in front of you um, to modify language in the uh, Commerce Park transitional zone. Um, the, the first proposal would be to modify Section 5B2F, which are permitted uses in the Commerce Park transitional zone um, that are allowed by site plan. To include retail and personal service establishments, including Type B parcels, right? Type B in particular, drugstores and non food establishments, banks, that kind of thing, by, by site plan use in the common part, and parcels with frontage on, on the state highway. Um, so you have to have frontage on the state highway for Type B use with the site plan approval. I think I don't. I don't remember last time anyone had a problem with that that language. Um, so we certainly ask you to consider all of this, but certainly that uh, uh, as well. So the other portion would be to modify Section 5D 5F to allow a special permit in the transition zone. Type A, which are your uh, your food establishments, essentially. Um, so the changes we've made based upon the conversations we had last time was to limit this to uh, lots of new frontage on a state highway, which I think existed last time, but having a minimum acreage of five. Carl, I'm yeah. sorry. When you're going through this, I was hoping you'd give me a red line. Uh, yeah. When you're going through it, if you wouldn't mind. Point out the differences. Just say, yeah, just if it's, yeah, if it's, you could go with like quote on lots with or whatever. Mm -hmm. Just. So the first part yeah, doesn't know what's yes. Yeah, what's the difference is the minimum acreage five acres versus prior was we didn't have a minimum we didn't right? yeah. okay yeah and the next bullet no more than one drive through establishment per five acres I think that that might have been in the language the last time in other words if I have ten acres I could have two right but if I had nine acres I couldn't have two right. I'd have to have a multiple of five to have more than one in one parcel. So it's one per five. Per five acres. So if I have a five acre parcel, you get one. 25% uh, ground floor area was in the I'm last sorry. time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Good. You want to go back to the yeah. Yep. 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 If I have 119. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, you know, it's, yeah, I, I, I suppose. It's if you the, wanted to that's place, the absurd, Carl, but go ahead. Yeah, so I mean, how we prevent that? 
uh, if you wanted to propose a, a maximum, depending, you know, no matter how large your parcel was, um, it's something I think we probably would consider. Exactly because, like the last or the first, the first applicant, for selfish reason, we don't own 119 years. Right. We probably never will. There was only one parcel like that, and somebody slapped that up and they would play for the for the short time, basically. So um, next uh, bullet is that the establishment shall not occupy more than 25% of the total ground floor area of all buildings on the property. That was in our last proposal. Um, but we've added that um, if a standalone, because this would allow for standalone type of use, to be the first building occupied. All right. Yeah. You couldn't have a second one until something else was built that didn't include a type of establishment to make up for the 75% of ground floor area that you need, and then you thereafter have to comply anyway. So essentially you need to do 150% to get your second one. Does that kind of make sense? But it would allow for a single type A establishment as sort of a, a germinator for a parcel? Right. First, the first. The first building uh, First building going up. Okay. So and so is there. You know, maybe we'll rent the space in the, in the building that's got to go up next. So um, we had talked about the service window. So the next bullet point. Um, I think we proposed 400 feet, we've now down to 600 feet, which is two football fields. And um, it must be from the service window, or serving window where food is provided. So we had a discussion about, because there could be more than one window, one, you know, might order at one window or pay at another and, you know, get your food. So this would be just a point, it could, you know, so 600 feet from when you pick up your food, in one building, just away would be the window you would pick up your food at the next building if there was another one on the site. But John's doing the math and he's saying, Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do the so footprint. Kind of I'm doing the footprint of a building yeah. that would be a type A. Okay, I'm doing the footprint of the building. Mm -hmm. Now, you're saying measure it now from the serving window. Right. So, I mean, the buildings aren't that large, obviously. Footprints may be. Uh, 50 by 60. 2,500 square feet. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, yeah. okay. I'm, I was 50 yeah. by 60. I'll, I'll tone it down to 40 by 50. Yeah. But here's, here's the point to it. There's always a stupid thing. The serving window's here. Right. Right? So the building, the parking, the drive, the kiosk, the measuring it from the serving window or measuring it from any point. You with, we have, you with well, me on that? We had, last time we had proposed from serving windows, right? And I think what we came away with that the 400 was not uh, things, was not an adequate distance, right? And secondly. There were a lot of windows, so just tell us which window you're yeah, talking yeah, yeah, about. Okay. I was just, I'm just, I'm thinking now more of like point to point, any point in the building. Right. Whatever. I mean, it would be the building, it wouldn't be the quote unquote site. Well, it, it, it would be like, if we're was, thinking let's terms, say no. this was an end unit, if the, yes. if it was an end unit, yes. then the building, yes. That might be different than just standalone. Standalone, right? So, yeah, but I would just yeah. standalone. I'm fine with building. <laughs> Thank uh, you. And the standalone, it's not just building. It's right. Like, it's the yeah the site. I don't know. But given that, you know, you're probably looking at even though, let's say if this was a uh, I don't know, not one of your Typical, but you know, uh, something that had more restaurant space and it had a, a, a you know, like the scenario. 
Panera. Panera. Yeah. yeah. You can sit down inside or you can. Yeah, uh, they might be an end unit in the building. Do they do drive? They do yeah, they drive. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I think so, that's the kind of again, serving I mean, window is not that, inappropriate. That more powerful. I mean, like when you do, for instance, package stores, you can do from front door to front door. That's not unusual to see in a setback, in a separating distance. A lot of times, like regulations like that. I think the serving window is a pretty good. Well, again, that's you know, this is our proposal, and you know, we're willing to discuss it with you in, in greater detail. Um, you can keep going. So. Yeah. The next one is the same, 250 feet. And then the residents in the residential zone, right? North measuring from the serving window, which again, we, when we say that, we mean when you pick up the food. Right. To the nearest point of the building, that hasn't changed. The serving window is located at the other side, so that I'm sorry, I'm still at the 250. Yep. And I know we talked about this one. So it's 250 from, you say, a residence in a residential zone. Any versus part of the building. 250 feet from the lot from a residential zone. Right. Right. And the type of residential residences and the type of residential zoning is going to be impacted by this. It's de minimis to say the least. But I don't think that saying 250 feet from the zone is really going to make much of an impact on it. or on someone looking to right. develop the limited number of sites that are included here. Yeah, I'm just trying including to, uh, including the site that's south of what we just talked about an hour plus ago. Right. So your preference would be 250 feet of the residential zone of the zone. It's probably a difference of 30 or 40 feet. It, it, may not. I don't know. it, it might even it might even be more like 15 or 20 feet. Yeah. Um, so the next one is the serving window, and that has to change in the rear side of the building. And then we pulled up this language. We were talking about doing lines. Only one window serving food that should be served by one person in no double lanes. And, and frankly, may or may not eliminate prospects. This is a different thing. So, you know, they won't go there. Um, and then, unless otherwise required by the committee, the service to the lane should be not less than 100 feet measured from behind the vehicle at the service window, i.e. the pickup window, which is room for, for 10 cars, and located so as not to obstruct access to parking spaces, sidewalks, and pedestrian access to the building. Uh, the next two are exactly the same. No outside audio system permitted, except for the central service ordering menu board. So no music or anything else being piped in. I went to the gas station the other day and uh, I got bombarded with gas station TV. I didn't know that was a thing. US TV is actually a thing. So um, I listened to a couple of music. Pretty soon when you walk up, <clears throat> ads that you're going to see are whatever you were looking at on your phone. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so they'd all be golf ads. <laughs> for you. Uh, well, bikes for me. Yeah, and then the last is, is the same. Said you should not be visible to be problems for motors, and pedestrians, and shall be located in such a manner as not to restrict access by emergency service oh, the portion of the building. Obviously, this would be a special use permit use, which would have the standard um, conditions. You know, you have your special use permit regulations, some very technical, you know, site plan kind of things, and you have the health, safety, welfare, the general, more broader. Um, uh, standards which give you a little more uh, teeth to, to, to turn something down if you don't like the way it looks, um, you know, if it doesn't have the right feel, harmony, and all that stuff that is attached to a special permit. So, and those are all judged individually uh, as application, you know, comes along. It's not like a site plan where 
if I meet all the regulations, you are sort of incumbent given my approval. This would be by special permit. So we give you that added security. Of, uh, and there are a number of cases. And the most recent was the St. Joseph's High School, where the Supreme Court said that we could you know, disapprove a special permit based upon those conditions of health, safety, welfare, even if it met the other more technical or, or more specific standards in the regulation. So that's it. We we um, we took what you had to say last time. Um, we went back to the drawing board, and, and this is what we came up with. Now, um, I I have to just put this other stuff on the record. Um, obviously, you know that this is a legislative decision, right? We, 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 we get to make these when you, you feel it's appropriate to do so. Any text amendment or boundary change is like that. And the only, um, it can't go outside of your comprehensive plan. In other words, is this something that's permitted under the regulations and under the statutes? And you already allow these types of uses or at least some of these uses. And, you know, the, the goal here is to reduce the uh, separating distance, generally speaking, um, and to put them in the transition zone. But you do allow them in other zones, you know, the Dunkin Donuts. Yep. The only drive to that, other than banks, that's the only food serving is to food. Oh, there's one on the uh, gas station. 66. Yeah, they're up 66. Yeah. Um, there's a smaller town than us that has to. It's just on the <laughs> side. So, but the other consideration is your plan of conservation and development, which I don't know if you're working on it, not working on it, but you're due to be staring at you, Robert. I saw that. <laughs> You know, you're, you're due to, have to, to, to take a look at it at least. And so your your fire plan is for 2014. And it, wasn't, I, it wasn't adopted till 2016, so we're technically I not there yet, according to the state. Yeah, uh, but you did implement most of the recommendations that I could see. The biggest one, of course, was creating the zone that we find ourselves in there right now, the transition zone, um, because obviously it's you know, it's named for the fact that we didn't want the industrial types of uses that were permitted in the industrial zone, which then became the Commerce Park, which then became the Farmers Park A and B, encroaching into your village district. We wanted something a little more friendly to the village district. Uh, and that's why we created this zone. And I read through your plan of conservation development. And when it talks about the commercial part of the village district and the reasons for creating this, it talks about, it uses the words critical mass a lot, that you need to, you understood, right? That you need to create a critical mass to get um, things going in, in the village. So, um, and I think uh, personally, something that I saw that you guys did, which I thought was great, to allow residential uses in this zone. Um, and, and, and you may, you know, there may be parcels that are suitable for that. I don't know that these parcels that my client owns generally are, you know, you know right on Route 20 and, and so on and so forth. But, you know, once you have critical mass, you've got to be able to do something with it um, in a way that will create other opportunities. And we think that uh, allowing these types of uses will uh, jumpstart, I guess, some activity in the Commerce Park Zone, which will only benefit the activities that you have planned for your village. I think they're going to work in, in concert with each other. Uh, we, and promote each other. So that's sort of the application. We've heard it before. Um, we be glad to entertain any, any questions or anything that you have. Oh, uh, I could. Sure. Maybe you can answer this, but you can't. I don't have problems. You could look at this So that um, you're talking about, again, we're talking five acres per. Right. Mm -hmm. So the question would be um, in the Commerce Park transitional zone on the state highway, how many parcels are there that are um, greater than 9.9 .9 acres, i.e. 10 acres plus? Yeah, have fun and John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Break. Are they? Break. Yeah, break. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and I'm picturing. We did that math ourselves. So yeah. Yeah. this is. Um, yeah. And the reason, and you're not, I'm sorry, and you're not including 
one of the the largest of those, or you are. Included. I am included. Sort of that one. Yeah. That so, one. Okay. about 20 years ago, we did a text amendment in the laws. This is why I was comfortable with uh, because there's a principle in, in Zion that says if you create and use, it has to be uniform without, without the district. Right. All right. So you can't put limitations on it so that a parcel, let's say in a B zone, is treated differently than a different parcel in the B zone. And we created a regulation in the last that allowed, believe it or not, valley parking because right. valley parking is only one valley parking operation was ever approved by any in in so on. There's more than one there, but there's only one I got approved, and that was a result of actually the text man we didn't want it to use it. But we went and we looked at the regulations and the, we said, look, if you want to have this particular use, which would allow valet, if you had like a hotel out front and a restaurant out front, and you have excess acreage, you'd have you could have space for valet parking. That was the sort of the, the gist of the regulation. But we said you had to own a parcel on Route 75. And you couldn't create a parcel after October 1st of the year after we had this thing adopted and add frontage on Route 75 so that we qualified. To then open. And there were three parcels in that particular place, coincidentally, that would apply to it. Someone else who owned a parcel in, in the zone but did not frontage on Route 75 took us to court and right. we went to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court said, there are some uses you may want a few of them, but not a lot of them. Yeah. You don't want them proliferating throughout the entire zone. And since this is a special permit, a special permit is a uh, an exception to uniformity principle, and they said it was okay to do it. Right. So that's why, because we did that math, I forgot it was three, but I knew it was a lot more than you know, two and three. Right. So, and did you show us last time? Did you show us conceptual a, stuff? Yeah. Did you show us a concept one? Yeah. Would you like to show us one again? Sure. I, I, I'll let someone else who can. I think that's how it goes, but I'm happy. Yeah, and this is not a site plan. No. So this is not a site plan. We're not here for a site plan approval. This is just a, what it could conceptually look like. One of many concepts that could go on that. Sort of if I tried that, we'd, we'd be here for hours. What, trying to put that up? Yeah. <laughs> I would just want to pull it. Try to go see. I have to keep moving, although. Isn't the law say if, you, if you're on a corner with a sign, you have to keep moving? Yes, you do. <laughs> so I, I, I guess I'm going to explain <laughs> oh, that. Oh, okay. Now, this is uh, how, how much of a, uh, what is this space? You want us to yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stick to the law books. Thank you. Yeah. For the record, I'm Matt Whitmer from uh, Phaser Design Architects in Simsbury. Um, and this is a concept design for uh, the site that's on the corner of uh, Rainbow Road Route 20 on the top and, and Gateway Boulevard, uh, which is the side street. And, and you can kind of see it in the context right here of, uh, of Route 20 and what's going on on that location but very simply uh you know we do have a, a right turn in right turn out and then an entrance into the site here uh we did this to show a concept of how it might be subdivided with uh with two drive throughs there is a bank drive through here as you can see with queuing coming through and then we have a um uh, fast casual concept which is an end cap on this side uh, with the drive through coming around the back of the building and, and here. And again, we have it on the side of the building, um, you know, or tucked in between two buildings in both cases so that we satisfy those elements of the regulation. So this was done with the 600 foot in the Well, the 600 doesn't even apply, though. It doesn't even apply. Right. And, and, the the type a, the type and even the two yeah. doesn't. None of that applies. So, so not that it, is it not that it matters, and it's it's a five acre site. Right. So it would have one type A, and it would have a permitted type B because you can get a bank to come actually open a <clears throat> branch. Yeah. Good luck. Like mortar, please. Yeah. 
Thank you. I do like that you took into consideration the discussions that we had last time. And we're going to come back. And expanded on that. And, yeah. and I, I think you did that quite eloquently. I, I, um, I don't think we have a problem with John's suggestion about the 250 feet from the property line on the residential. So, you know, we're going to come back And everywhere it says serving window, if you want us to clarify that thing, pick up window. Or, or if you want to you know, propose some other way of measuring points of measure, you know, we, we certainly consider that as well. I think serving window is pretty clear. I mean, that's where you're getting the food, not where you're paying. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I would have, yes. But. So now I'm just trying to picture the, the missing link to me, which would be the parcel, which I, I think I know the parcel. That could possibly be the larger parcel. Yeah. Like that might look like. Right. I'm just trying to piece that together in my head. Not, not the very large piece. No, no, I know what you're saying. You know what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. You, you know what. Yeah. That would yeah, so I think, I mean, yeah, it's across the street. John, so on that residential, you're, you're I talking. I accused myself on an application on that back end. Yeah. And you're talking. This to remove in a residential. So it would just be 250 feet of a residential zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think Carl said that. Yeah, yeah. I think that would be okay. I think if we just put a max to, then I guess. Max on the number of? Yeah, type A on on, on any, no matter how large it is. Right. So that right. somebody else who has a larger parcel. Right. Yeah. For the maximum of three, max of two. Of type A, type A, mind you. What's, what's 10 acres 600, plus in type A right now? We're hoping the 600 feet mitigates and uh, space, but not so much that it won't be any kind of a cluster of the bottom of the park or two or three. They're going to be pretty spaced apart pretty far. Because even that even takes into account two different parcels yeah. feet right next to each other. You're yeah. still going to impede on the 600 feet. Yeah. That doesn't have to be the same parcel. They should have to be that. Right. But for, for purposes of knowing what John's thoughts are that there are other parcels, it's to apply to some mm -hmm. that or maybe if you want to put a maximum. Maximum, oh John, what are you saying? A maximum of three on any yes. specific parcel? I'm saying or two. You get one, on, a, yeah, a two type A yeah. on, on a on, on parcel. A right. Mm -hmm. If somebody really wanted to do that, couldn't they subdivide that parcel? And now they're two different parcels? I have a question. Sure. Um, again, this is a text moment, it's not site specific, but I am playing around with the three parcels that mm -hmm. could viably, um, the parcels owned by your client are still separated parcels that yeah, yeah, weren't there merged. Side, um, on parcel. the north side, one it's one parcel now. One. Yeah, okay. we, we have a merge that. Yeah. Right. yeah, I think we went over that last time. Okay. We really only two that we want to check. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And PP is on the top person. Come on, Frank. Do you remember that? Yeah. 
that thing down. Good old days. Or perhaps you want to open it up to the public and, and just sort of I wasn't sure if you were done. You can ask questions after that. I don't know. I think my thoughts are pretty smooth. I, I think they use a lot, right? but I don't want yeah. to. I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to bogey proceedings. So fine. Anyone else? Uh, anyone else here? Anyone from the public want to speak for or against? Sure. Well, you can pose a question. It may not get answered. Are, are you going to give them the update from EDC that they were supportive of this next amendment? We talked about it at the main meeting. Um, so my name is Paul Tulane. I live on Sunrise Terrace. <clears throat> my question has to do with the sequence or timing of this. I'm presuming that the uh, property we're talking about with the drive through and so forth may be the anchor you know, for, for this area, probably the uh, maybe an easier of the different uh, um, occupancies to get. And my question has to do with the timing. Is it possible that there could be just a, I'll say a fast food on this piece of property and nothing else sort of gets developed because there, there's no opportunity to develop it? So rather than it being part of a larger complex, which which kind of feels good to me, you know, part of a larger complex on the fast food, it would be the only uh, developed um, building on that property. Could that happen, given the, the um... If it could be, as, as I understand everything we've been discussing in the reading so far, it could be the first building that goes up. Right. And the only. It could I mean, be the only. Thing. If a development goes defunct and doesn't, the rest of it doesn't come to fruition, which sure. happens, then yes, that could be a possibility. And because, uh, you know, I, I think a, large, a lot of the sensitivity of the community is having the visibility of just you know that that property versus or that type of uh, development versus having a part of a larger thing i think would be a little bit more comfortable seeing it as part of a larger thing but, so that's really my question is that possible that's your guess um yeah, there was going to be about acreage but john spoke about that um so also i'm a I'm resident of the town but of course a, a member of the edc we did talk about this at the Economic Development Commission, and uh, it, it was it was widely agreed that this is the sort of thing we want to have uh, in our town. You know, it really uh, aligns very well with the uh, Village Center Master Concept Plan. Um, it's um, it's something that is it's very attractive. Uh, however, uh, we didn't talk about it so much as a, as a standalone versus a part of a larger you know uh, complex. So. Was was positive, and, and I personally do address mm -hmm. My only thought, Paul, is that the <clears throat> standalone to take that much in an acreage would be. Yep. Yep. Crazy. Uh, no, I, I get it. Uh, I know. You know I, we got to walk before we can run. Yeah. No, so I know you're you're casting it out there. Like I, yeah. I get it. Who knows? I mean. I mean, I'm not a developer. I can only imagine that you wouldn't develop more than you could occupy. Right, right. You know, so, you know, if, if that was the only game in town, maybe it would be a year. Sounds a little before. bit like paralysis by indecision, though. Yeah. Yeah, no, you got to something. You know, I, I get it. It's, it. You're certainly uh, motivated to do more. There's no question about it. There's a cell phone for Thank you. Anyone else from the public? Yeah. Oh, well, we another Paul. Yeah, another it's Paul. the Paul and Paul show. And I was the former chairman of the C. A lot of this is confusing, at least to me, and I think I understand something. My question is under the proposed text amendment now, how many drive through fast food restaurants could possibly be put on these two properties? That's my question. And then my comment is, based on where we are on our town budget, we're all looking for additional tax revenue. Uh, I don't think we should put too many obstacles in front of a 
developer and property owner that's already invested millions of dollars in that town and is paying substantial uh, property taxes in the town in a building that's basically big. But no, quite an investor in each Grammy. So I, we should try to do whatever we can as a reason to accommodate you know, the needs of this, this uh, development plans. Having said that, I would still like an answer to how many fast food restaurants on do? that particular lot, or on, on the transition, on the two lots, the one on Gateway Boulevard that's across from uh, the old StubHub building on Gateway, mm -hmm. and then the one across from Twenty. Those are, those are the three property or two properties. I that I mean, I'm not a site designer, so I'm not going to speak to that. But the one on Gateway is only five, five, acres. Acre five acres. Five acres. Five acres. So, that, so be that can only be one. Um, the other side has approximately 18 acres, and um, so maybe maybe three, depending on all of the other provisions that are in here. So that's sort of a hard. We think certainly three, there might be pushing it, but possible depending on how we no, it's it. But it's only it's on three, 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 yeah. The one yeah. parcel. Yeah. The one parcel. Yeah. Wasn't one of them like seven point eight acres, and the other was like uh, yeah. So it's, it's they're combined now. It's ten point four and seven point eight two. They're combined, so you're at like eighteen acres. You did. Yeah. So it'd be four, three on one, and three on one, and one on the other. Four would be the max. That doesn't mean that they're planning that. I was just wondering what the max would be if another developer came in and purchased some of the property. So in that regard, I guess I would support uh, Mr. Welch's comment that if we could limit that to two on the total about level, three. Uh, what do you think about three? Uh, I think that would be appropriate. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? Just for the record, I, I want Mr. O'Connor to know that he's still a member of his community, which is putting the state in front of you if he wishes to uh, my, my concern with his participation. Mm -hmm. So if you were if you were theoretically building on a fifteen plus acre piece of property um, on uh, on the state highway in the uh, Commerce Park transitional zone. You could put a you could put a, a type A establishment. You would then have to meet the twenty five percent requirement. Which yeah. Some of that theoretically would depend on the shape of the property that you have too. You you still um, have to be within the bounds of your. So yeah, uh, but just in terms of but go with but go with this. The total ground floor area of all buildings. Doesn't, it's not, we're not talking substantial buildings because we're not talking substantial building footprint. We said earlier on a standalone type of so let's say the standalone type is 2,500 square feet. Right. So, so that's, so that, yeah, but we have to build another That's a certain type of type A, but then it you could know, be bigger. But then you mentioned, right, well, you mentioned uh, what was the Panera. Panera, thank uh, you. Yeah, they're a little bit larger. They're larger. 5,500. Yeah, yeah. I've been to the name. Had a drive I didn't know they could. I didn't so know whatever, I'm through. just using the 10 to 25. So we have to build another 7,500 foot of non-type A space. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's yeah, why I'm doing. We would that's why I'm trying to do the math. Really and it's yeah. all it's all running through. Right. But if there was something larger, 5,500 or 5,000, we'd have to put up another 15,000. So there's only where a person that's going to fit. Right. Well, now I'm trying to draw it. You're trying to draw. I'm trying to draw. Scale. I'm, just, I'm just trying to draw how paper there. Like how you could theoretically fit, fit the third one. Yeah. I'm not even sure if you could, based on this, if you could even fit. I, 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 whatever. I, 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 I can tell you, we looked at that. Yeah. It's virtually impossible that we go on. Yeah, that's, you may have to have one setback. That's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, yeah. That, yes. It's very hard to have three. Like, at six, uh, yeah. I would say from frontage alone, it's impossible. Yes, very good. It, yeah. I already tried. Yeah, 
Now, to your point, if you set it way further back on, on yeah. one of the lots, you might be able to get the 600 feet to be, be able to get this. You, then you might be able to get a third one. They'd have to be in a... They, right. It would be a triangle. Right. Yes. And then that third, third, the third guy probably would not be happy with the location. Right. On, on, the, on, the, on the additional buildings. Yeah, yeah. They are set back. And on. we're talking ground floor area. Right. So right. doesn't, two, doesn't two sound good? <laughs> the market will dictate it. We may not get one. We may not right. get one. Right. If the people We've got to be really creative to fit three. We like the opportunity to try to fit the three on that one part. Mm -hmm. If it was possible. Okay. We beat this horse to death. Mm -hmm. That is true. So we're saying limit to three. Mm -hmm. well, we're not saying anything yet. No, no but I'm not trying to keep writing it down right now. Yeah. I think that if they're saying they would be willing to limit it to three on one parcel. I think John has put on the table he'd prefer to see limiting it to two, which they're not agreeable to. Um, so I know, if I'm, if I'm on agreeable it to three based on the geometry of the properties. Was Mr. Excuse me. Was Mr. Oliva speaking on behalf of EDC or on no, behalf no, of himself? No, on himself. No, as a resident. As a resident. Yeah, he's no longer on the EDC. Paul of Paul number one. Yeah. Um, and you were speaking as a member of the EDC. Yes. Indicating that the EDC was. So he was also speaking as a. No, but I, it, resident. It, to me, it seems important to know what the EDC. And we're speaking on behalf of the EDC. Whereas last time you made comment suggesting that the EDC was had a position, but your position seemed to have been different, if I'm not mistaken. Thank you. That's all I need. Okay. <clears throat> um, if I can just note a couple of items for the record, I will sure. keep it them very short sure. because most of my comments have already been address which were specifically the differences which we went through line item by line item um and they did just for the record when i did go back to our previous uh meeting and pretty much they addressed all of the comments that were brought up uh from the commission from that meeting comments of concern comments of concern correct um the only two things i did want to just touch on because they were talked about at the previous meeting that were not in here is the hours of operation were taken out from the previous text amendment that they had however your special permit uh criteria does allow you to set the limits um for hours of operation so i i think that that is covered in that respect but i just did want to make sure that you guys knew that that was now the second thing that had come up was the possibility of having that payment window versus the serving window that you could have two windows and that is not spelled out in the language of this text amendment i didn't know if that was an issue if you guys wanted to be specific that it, they could they have, a payment, have a payment right window. um it's not really talked about in it so i did just want to bring that up because we actually had a pretty long conversation about the two windows at the last meeting <laughs> So I don't know if that's something you want to add in or um, if it's necessary. Um, I, I don't think it would be bad to add that in because it is something that I did notice as we were reading through here that if somebody read this by the word, there could be an issue with putting a, a payment window in. And I mean, I, I don't remember the last time I even went to a drive through, but it seems when I drive by them, it seems like that's kind of a regular thing. So I don't know if that's an assumption. Well, the only one I go through is Duncan, and they think they just have one window. But Yeah, and I think if, if from what I've seen, there's most payment windows are just, they, yeah, they put like, oh, they don't even them. use them. They don't use them. Yeah. All right, so if you guys don't think it's problematic, then that's fine. We don't have to add anything in. But we had to spend a substantial amount of time talking about it. But I wanted to make sure it was brought up again. Yeah. I do visit these places because I'm tired of quote food. So um, there are some places that have a payment window and another window for now. That's just a, a kiosk or anything and then one window. So I guess it would depend on the, the tenant. You know, what what their what their building might look like or what I would think they're going into a um you know, a building, we look quite differently than it would. Mm -hmm. 
you know, as I start right. going on. Um, the final thing is it was referred out to Prague. I see John hold that thought. It was referred out to Krog, and as with the first uh, referral, they did comment on the idling of vehicles and air pollution, which is not under your control, um, but they did want to just acknowledge that and that there's no impact on the region or the budding communities. And John, go ahead. Yes, yeah, so since we have well, one window serving and one service lane, mm -hmm. do you think that we don't need to sit there and talk about payment window, serving window? that we could rely on special permit approval? Is because we have this word shall in there is the only piece of that sentence that makes me a little bit sort of cautious. Um, reading, um, there shall be only one window serving food. Um, it doesn't necessarily not, not, it say it's a payment. payment. When, yeah, so probably could, could get away with it under special under permit. Special yeah. Permit. Yeah. I think you could. Yeah. So you can pay at one window. But can only be served. You're going over that. Correct. Yeah, and the other, you know, when you get in your day of coke for 99 cents from McDonald's, you pay at the first window, don't you? <laughs> but you pay at the first window right there on Bill Bill Avenue. Uh, everyone's lost. I guess I like this, you know. I'm Route 75. But you're coming home from Hartford and just can't wait to get to the office. I know we're going to try to both with it. I know you do. I know you do. And they're 99 cents on your phone. The membership with <laughs> app, you just don't, just order with a number and you don't even pay. <laughs> Come back later, sir. We're about to say something, Carl. No, uh, I think I'm, I'm pretty much done. Sure. In that case. That was a call that my bank would have. Um, can I get a motion to close the public hearing? I'll make a motion to close 2407. I'll second that. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you for your time. Okay, where are we? 2408. Okay. Um, I lost my Mr. Chairman, I should note for the record that Brian O'Connor is seated again as a regular member. Okay. Brian O'Connor is back and Austin is out. Sorry, Austin. Dang it. And I lost my Not last. <laughs> legal notices again. Do you want me to read it? I have yes, it. I Application. Uh, oh, maybe I don't have it. See, I closed it out because we lost it. I have my agenda. Oh, no, I do have the legal notice. East Grand Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, June 11, 2024 at 7 p.m. in East Granby Town Hall. Hearing room to hear application 2408, Galasso Materials, LLC, for a five-year renewal of an existing quarry special permit. Sorry, excuse me. Yeah. Um, but I just ended that and suggest that perhaps it might be a mission step. No, I can't do that. Skip down to item 70. I'm assuming that the application 24A is the last, so assuming you have a presentation that might take some time this evening. Um, I don't think so. I can. I think it's pretty straightforward. I know there's some new faces. I'd so be happy to do a brief summary of glory. And, um, I mean, just as a comment on this, we're, we're probably going to be extending this to the next meeting. Yeah, anyway. so, so yeah, it's just, I'm sorry, it's just in the past, we've always handled this as, as a separate meeting and whatnot. I was surprised to see it was on, uh, quite frankly, <laughs> in the past when we've come in. We had a two month break. <laughs> huh? of, we had a two month break, I guess, so that it tends to be a bit of a presentation. I just I think in 2014 we had several meetings. Yeah, that was a big. There was a lot going on. Right. In 2019, we did it in one, one meeting in less than an oh, hour. Yeah, because it was an update. Yeah. yeah. So, well, I remember 14. Well, as I this is a reclamation. We we're about. they're still working. Also. This is much simpler. We should open the public hearing. Um, yeah. Application 2408, Glasson Materials LLC, five-year renewal of existing quarry special permit mm -hmm. and increase excavation depth. Within the 2014 quarry expansion area from elevation 252 to elevation 210. Okay. Um, uh, can I get a motion to open the public hearing room? Make a motion. 
I'll second. All those in favor? Vote. Carry on. Thank you very much. My name is Craig Timpson. I'm here representing Veloc Materials. Um, I've worked for Veloc Materials for the last 26 years at this location. Uh, I'd love to talk about this location, but I want to be cognizant of your time. Um, like I said, we do have some new faces. Anytime you need to stop me or ask me to go back, I'll go back. But I think we're pretty straightforward. Um, as a matter of introduction, Carrie Olson couldn't join us in person tonight. She's in our hybrid format. She's uh, the company land use attorney. I have Rob Good. He's our uh, the company hydrogeologist. Uh, Lee Turner Sr. runs day-to-day -day operations at the quarry. Jason Patry is a 25-year employee. He's our quarry manager and lives and brings us quarry every day. Lee Turner Jr. is our health and environmental health and safety manager. Um, also very much involved in day-to-day -day operations and Laurel Engineering was kind enough to put together this package for you. We have Kristen Wallace from Laurel here as well, in case you have any questions. Um, as, a, as a matter of history of the quarry, the quarry's been around for about 75 years. It was originally opened by the Ron Carey family. It was run by the Ron Carey family until 1994. Um, it was bought by Tilcon. Silicon then had the best of itself in 97. Velocity Materials and Velocity Holdings were formed to purchase the assets that is the East Grand Quarry. Velocity Materials has been operating uh, the quarry since March of 1997. Uh, when Velocity first took over, um, they were working under approvals that were done as far back as the Ron Carey days. And um, our first real um, while we had to come in and give five-year updates to the committee, our first expansion where we were asking for a new piece of property to be quarried um, happened in 2014. And you know, we talked in our presentation about the 2014 expansion. A lot of there's a lot of reference to the 2014 expansion, but I'll tell you it actually began in about 2011. Um, when we knew that we were going to need to go to this new property, we sought out and um, had the property surveyed. We identified all the wetland locations. We identified uh, different species that lived in the wetland locations. We worked in concert with the town, and it was about a three-year process before we finally got it to the 2014 hearing. Um, I know in 2014, I was new to the commission. While I had been at the company for a little while, there was somebody ahead of me that represented the company prior to that. And in 2014, I said to the commission, I said, if I tell you I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. I'll look you in the eye. I'll come sit at your office anytime you want. And I really, truly believe that Galasso has lived up to that since 2014. Um, the 2014 plan included a whole host of items that were otherwise never included in the early days of Ron Care, such as restoration. Um, and that is something that we worked with town staff and and um, with the commission um, to really put together i think a really good in-depth plan that we provided a bond for that bond remains in place to stay uh, we've also put in place bonds for erosion and um, soil soil and erosion control measures those bonds um, are in place today however in speaking with town staff and particularly tom Grimaldi, he wants to go over that get some new estimates on what we might have for soil and erosion control. And then he wanted to make a recommendation as to the level of that bond, what the, what the dollar amount of that bond should be. And I'd be happy to live by Tom's recommendation for that. Um, so in, in 2014, we were able to have 22 acres identified of which 17 of those acres were, were mineable. Um, so if you can turn to page C1, or if we can put it on the screen or both, I just want to give you an overview um, as far as the entire quarry um, on C1. You'll see it's, it's like an image with some with the trees and whatnot in it. The, there's a dashed line um, on the left center um, that is the area that we're going to be focused that most of these slides will focus on. And inside of that dashed line, you'll see there's a smaller dashed line with a solid line through it. That is actually the expansion area. Everything to the right of that is the old quarter. 
So everything to the right of that had really been worked over the past, you know, until 2014, from the 1950s until 2014. Um, the expansion area, like I said, is um, what we're working on now. Um, and the, uh, the, we've excavated that according to the phases that were laid out in 2014. We've excavated on the diagram, it's the, you know, the upper left, um, which is the south west portion of the property that was really phase one that went from over elevation 400 it now sits at about elevation 340. um that that slope has been cut down and craig, um craig and craig i'm sorry yes. this is all in area one right yes this area one is yes, the okay. area that we've worked in right now area two and so we've gone we've gone from 400 yep we're now down to 340 340 yep through that area one. And is that what we had? Are we bottomed out? No, we're not bottomed out. Yeah. We go to what? Two, 250. 250. 250. 250. Yeah. 250 is, is what we under the, is what we agreed on in 2014. 14. Yeah. The, core, the, the entire remainder of the quarry is at level 210, but in 2014 we agreed 250. We're going to do all of our wetlands monitoring, all of our hydrogeology. We're going to continue to get those results. As I recall, back even 14, you were figuring in five years we should get to about 250 in that. That was our original plan. And when we came in for our 2019 um, approval, we talked about the fact that in 2016, we've had new owners take over the quarry. They've introduced um, recycling technology, so we actually take blacktop that's milled off the roads, we can put it back into the mix. It didn't and actually down that and, way. Yeah, that yeah. Why so, so the demand for stone actually lessened from our original projections right. as we're reusing blacktop in, in lieu of urgent that stone. Mill in mix. Yeah. Be cool. So blacktop is actually the most recycled product in the yeah. entire United States. Um, so right now where we stand, we've got the area one is leveled off at 340. However, you will see that we have a cut going in, and that cut is right around elevation 280. Okay, so we are cutting in, you know, we, we brought that down in, in what we call benches, um, and now we're starting to cut into those benches. So as we cut back at elevation 280, our next cut will bring us below the 250 mark, which is why we're here for the second portion of, of what we're seeking. I mean, we're really seeking two things. We're seeking A, a, re a five-year renewal of our special mining permit, and B, the authority from you folks to say, okay, your limit is no longer 252, it's going to be 210. Right. right. So we're asking for an additional 40 feet of rock. Um, if we could have this large poster that might be helpful, it's much better than clear. What we see on the overhead. So, essentially, from this tree line through here, back to here, over to here, and over to here, is that was the expansion. All of this was right. permitted under other existing permits. Um, we work in benches. So the way that you pour, you, you know, some people would kind of think just logically, okay, so you drill and then you blast and then you offload and then you drill again right behind it. Well, you can't do that. Um, it's not a, an accepted good practice for mining. So what we need to do for mining is we drill this and then we shoot it to get this. This now we have a pile of rock that we can load out in, into, into rock trucks. But while we're loading that out, we need another place to put the drill to keep that person active. Otherwise, every time, if you only had one place to drill, you would have continuous shutdowns of operation. Because before we can drill this face again, all of this stone needs to be removed because the driller actually needs to measure to the 40 floor to make sure that these holes that he's drilling for the next shot are lining up with the 40 floor. And he can't do that with all the rock there. 
So quarries generally work two to three different faces at a time. So they can kind of hopscotch the drill and hopscotch the loadout and, and the cleaning up of what we call the tub. So is that, I'm sorry, is that what, so that's what you're showing there. So um, you, you pointed to that shelf that was. So this area right here from this tree line, like yeah. straight across. Yeah, right there, that, right where your finger is, yep. that, that was. This was the was northern most most boundary of the expansion area in 2014, okay. and then it goes south from there. So, right, right, right. Over 40 acres. Right. And then, so you would be working. So what we're working right now is we're working this face backwards. Right. Towards these faces here. This is the limit you, of excavation to our south. Are you working, I'm, I'm sorry, you're not working on that uh, western line. You're working on the... The one we're, we're working right there, right and then here. and then the one that's on the southern end of the property. Yep, and then yeah, and then, and then we're and working, then working a face any, here that we're working. I got it. So you well. so at any point in time you work three, four faces. Usually three. Okay. Yep. I get it. Yep. So you know, I I know people in our industry throw around terms like benches that we think everybody knows, but essentially this is what they call a bench. Yeah. Yeah. And this is what they call a bench. So we well. We've left these benches here um, because we don't want ever want to box ourselves in, and you know if we can at some point move to the south. These benches will continue on. But right now, what we've stripped off is this. What has we've built in accordance with the plan? These were the first sediment basins that we built. We call them water quality basins. Right. And essentially, the water that was coming down this slope was diverted down this channel. And it would go into a settling basin here, and then it would go over to a settling basin here, and it was designed to, if this water ever got deep enough, to discharge slowly out into the wetlands. Um, even with very heavy rains, most of this water would, would evaporate through transpiration rather than even coming down out through that outlet. But the outlet was there. Once this elevation get, this is at elevation 290, once this elevation is, is lower than 290, obviously we can't go to this basin in here, which is why we construct these basins. So any water runoff that we have will be swelled into these two new basins that were designed in 2014, and we constructed them last year. Last and they're at what elevation? Those basins are at elevation 220 or 230. Right. 250. About 250. So, so what we have is this was phase one. This is really phase two. We're going to continue to work back probably in three rows here like this, you know, go back to here and then move and go back to here. So we could be working at face here and face here, you know, but we're going to methodically move these benches back. Once we get to this and we go below that elevation right there, then we'll come in and we'll, we'll, um, We'll take this rock out. These are very small shots, but you take them out just so you can ultimately continue to work down so you have always have a flat working surface out there. That was the way that it was designed in 2014. Um, that's the way we've mined it since 2014. And Navarro um, has provided in their package a survey that shows we're still well within our boundaries that we were approved for. Um, so really, on, on the renewal grid, of the special permit, um, we're just asking for us to continue to do business as usual. Um, we're, you know, we're asking, we're, we're committing to the same exact restoration plan that we have in place. We're committing to working with Tom Grimaldi on updating any soil erosion control. We have soil erosion control plans in here that Tom has looked at and agreed to. He just wants to put a cost figure on it so we can appropriately size a bond for it. And you're comfortable with them deciding? So um, just for the record, the, the bond that they have um, in place that was put in place is actually much more substantial than what a new bond would be based on what was supposed to have been done in the 2014, which has been accomplished. Right. And right. so it will actually be reduced. The one thing I do want to note, just so you're aware, um, in the past, the town would accept like surety bonds for erosion and sedimentation control. That's not a practice that we've been doing. Um, the town engineer and I would prefer cash bonds 
having a surety bond for erosion and sedimentation control actually defeats the purpose. If there was an issue with erosion and sedimentation control and you had to call a surety bond, it would take months and months to do that. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. The bond was only, I think, in the 20,000s back mm -hmm. in 2014. Yep. So, it, you know, there's a substantial reduction that will take place. But I did just want to put that on the record so you are aware, and it doesn't come as a surprise to okay. you yep. um, when we commented on. The other thing I also, um, and we already talked about this, so I know this will be surprises. Um, I'm not one that likes to refer back to previous approved plans, so I know there's a full restoration plan that was part of the 2014 plan, and, and I was able to see that, but I would like that made as part of the final plans for this 2024 renewal so that it, it's carrying over and just not commented back to. Um, so those we're plan sheets, yeah, we already talked about those. Those plan sheets that are relevant to the restoration plan would be made part of these final plan sets. Which is why this is going to continue on to the next. We're going to leave this open. That's up to the commission. I mean, I think if you're putting it forward, and unless you have those plans here to show the public, the restoration we do. plans. Yeah. So if that's the case, then then, then that's submit, okay. You can submit it today. It's something yes. that has, as you mentioned, it's something that's previously been approved by this commission. Um, we're not looking for any changes. We're not right. looking for any reductions. Nothing like that. We're just. Um, you know, Robin had stated she wants it concurrent with this plan set, which Loero has the document. They can add it to the plan set. Um, my only reluctance to go into the next meeting is the next meeting time for this commission. I'm going to actually be in Alaska. I would be here. To be able to speak. I didn't know if you would have the plans here, like physically here. So if you have them physically here, we can put them into the record, and then we'll make it as a and we can make it as a conditional approval that it's made part of the final plans, which I will review, and then you will file. So okay. we we can do that. That, okay. that works. Yep. If they weren't physically here, then yeah, no, that would be a different conversation. We have to okay. we have to provide. So, um, like I said, I wanted to be cognizant of your time. If you have any questions, I, I could talk all day about the <laughs> but, but as part of this, too, though, you are asking to go down in the As, expanded well, acres. Yes, what we're asking percent. is in this expansion area, and the expansion area is just 17 acres. Okay, so right. The total, okay. The, the total acreage is 22 acres. That included new sedimentation basins and whatnot. The mineable area is just 17 okay. acres. And what I'm saying is we're cutting this back. This picture is probably eight months old. So this cut has already come back like this. And when we start to make our next cut, we can't because we're limited by the permit um, to elevation 252. We would have a 30 foot bench, which you know, we'll do whatever, yeah, it, whatever do. Um, and there's no way we can get through the next five years without going below that 250 and, and some part of this expansion plan. So given that the rest of the quarry is at 210, given that 10 years of monitoring have shown that we haven't had any ill impacts, um, and given that you know, hopefully as a 75-year commun you know, community participant and and, um, and with an open-door policy, Tom Grimaldi can come on site any day he wants. Um, Tom has been very helpful. Staff has been very helpful. And it's a relationship that we want to continue with Tom. We really do. So. All of the wetlands remediation work from the 2014 permits has been completed, and they do um, provide us with continuous monitoring, though. I looked at the a wetlands permit, and you guys actually might be able to stop giving us those monitoring um, okay. reports. So we'll talk more about that. That's under the wetlands permit, so it's a different conversation. But um, we got our most recent one, I believe, in April or even the beginning of May. Um, so it does show that there have been no issues out there, that everything is fine. Um, so they've been keeping up with those parameters of their previous, not only wetlands permit, but special permit that was issued by this commission. I mean, we have fourth generation employees working at Quarry now, which to me is just amazing. You know? And the guys that come in, for the most part, you know, they're guys that want to see this continue and see where the bank is work there. Oh, I, just, so I watch it from that side yeah. constantly yep. back there. And, and um, you know, we're not like other quarries. I've helped toward a lot of other quarries in my 26 years. And, you know, there's junk cars and this and that. We try to keep this as neat as a can. Mm -hmm. We have other pictures of some of the members. We want to see some other photographs of the quarry. But like I said, we just try to stay in the bounds, keep playing by the rules. Anything come, comes up, we want to contact this town. 
Can I just go to C3? Sure. I'm looking again. I'm looking there. And just So if I read it right, the area that's in the red blue is the areas that we're talking about. Their existing area. Yes. Yeah, so, no, so essentially what this is showing is the boundary line of the 2014 approval. Right. And then... Um, Lorero tried to show you essentially it's the exact same line yep. um, for what we're looking for to be able to go down to elevation two ten from the two fifty two to the two ten. Yep. Right, and then the area to the north is 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 at two sixty and staying that way. The area to the to the north. Well, well, that right now that's a roadway to be able to get up. Right. So will this eventually road be right here. Yeah. Right. So will this eventually be the roadway going down? Everything from this line here is already approved to two and down is already approved to two ten. Right, right, right. So yes, these roads will be taken down as this elevation comes down. Right. Is the floor that's there, the four floor, what's is that at two sixty? No, I'm sorry, just Right in the middle, right in the middle of the photo. Right, oh, right the, here? The floor. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, that, elevation is, that is elevation. Like 260? 260. Yes. Okay. So then, so at 210, you came back five through. years from now, that floor will actually be dropping then down yeah. approximately so 50 so feet. Floor itself is we'll keep yeah. going. Yeah. So ultimately, we're going to be taking all of this rock out, but we're Trying to get this rock down to these elevations, right? And that's what I'm, that, yeah. what I'm trying to establish is is that floor that's in the photo. What elevation is that at? And when the additional excavation occurs, will that floor then be a downhill? No, that no, floor will continue to go too. Yeah. So, so that. I'm just trying to get a feel of how far out this actually goes. Now. Okay, so out or how far down? This how far to the north? How far to the north? How far to the north? Yeah, because because I mean I'm looking here and we're talking about this area one. So if you look, if you refer back to page C one again. Yep. 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 So in page C one. There we go. That's a good picture. Where you have. Yeah, this is all two ten right now. Yeah. Okay. And see, and then it steps up, steps so, up. So that's, that's at the floor that's that at the two ten. Yes. And then that's the that's up. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All the Somehow main part and where the mill is, that's all 210. The yes. Mill is yes. Yes. Yep. It looks like all other stuff to the right, to the north, yeah. is yep. already at 210. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. It's off the sheet, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, you'll so on, on page C1, you know, we have the little triangle. Everything we're talking about that's is 2015. Yeah. yeah. Two tangles all the way over here and start stepping here, and then start stepping up here, right. and up here you're at like two fifty something. I think somebody rides their bike in that quarry and just their approvals to two fifty two. Right up here, but they're at three. They're at three hundred. Mm -hmm. Three forty. We're at three forty, but we're cutting in at two eighty. So in part of that expansion area, we're already at two eighty. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. We level it all off, no, and then we started going. And then you that was that. That's that elevation of what I was calling you. Yeah. Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to continue to follow these benches. I get it. Just back. I get it. Oh, good. They'll invite you in and give you a whole tour. Awesome. We, any board member can come in. We're happy to give so you a tour. Cool. I moved to this town when I was 14. I've never seen that. Really? I mean, I've seen aerial views. Have you seen Comet Ridge behind there? Yeah. Dude, get a light. You know, it's <laughs> inside once in a while. And I've, I've lived all over this town, too. It's it's really a wonder to see. It really is. And it's a huge the, the, machine. The nice part about it is a lot of residents don't even realize that it's there. Yeah. Um, you know, um, but uh, we we'd be happy to give you a tour. Jason can give you his card. Any any of the board members at at any time. You know, just let us know. We're happy to it's do really it. It's cool. worthwhile. We have the Boy Scouts in. We always have the Boy Scouts in when they watch the blast. And they're amazed. And in fact, if you get a chance and you talk to Jason, come watch a blast. Because yeah. you watch at solid rock. It just 
you'll, you'll it see it liquid. before you hear it, and then it just, it almost looks like it turns into liquid. And then, you know, it creates 20,000 tons of rock right there. It's, impressive. it's, it's really a neat thing. The blast are always around you. Right? Earth science students come in. Uh, we've had college students come in. Um, I'm going with you, Jeff. We share. We, we love to show. Going there. Yeah. What time is the blast? They're at like blasts are always at 12:05. Yeah. And we do that just so everyone in town knows at 12:05. If they hear something, they're like, "Oh, yeah, it's the fourth." <laughs> I don't think you know, anyone's we, ever heard we, of. Uh, give scholarships to the high school, and I always say, you know, when I spoke at the scholarship ceremony, I'd say, "Well, hey, what's 12:05?" And they had all know, you know, <laughs> of blast time. So, yeah, we love it. We love it. We love working in town. We appreciate your time tonight. Do you have anything else? Just for my own edification. Sure. So it was at 210, and then in 214, it went up to 252? Or just the in, expansion area? Is that Just, the, just the in the expansion, expansion area. The, okay. the, the old quarry was all permitted to level 210. Okay. And, and then the that's 17 area, Because it was an expansion area, and we had some wetlands that we wanted to protect and monitor and everything else we all agreed in 2014 over that series of two years let's go to 250. okay good. and then we'll see where we are and 10 years later here we are <clears throat> okay. out of curiosity i just have some questions sure like what are some of the um environmental assessments that you guys do like do you guys take into account like the truck traffic and like the diesel emissions coming in and out just like out of curiosity, do you guys deal with that stuff? Well, what we do for neighborhood quality is uh -huh. we voluntarily close, but not permanently, but we we strip traffic out of on the town road. I don't even remember the name of the road. Hillcrest. So all the trucks that come in and out are coming in and out on, on state property. Okay. As far as you know, us monitoring diesel emissions out of the trucks that come in and out every day, because it's not just our trucks. We have mm -hmm. our They're all electric trucks, aren't they? Now? Okay. They're all electric trucks. They're all Teslas. Teslas. That's what the state was. Those the roads. But, you know, as far as monitoring that, no, that's not something that we do um, in our own trucks. We discourage idling. We, you know, we have a lot of our own regulations to try to save money and, mm -hmm. and help. Okay. But you updated a plant also produce emissions. Oh, that, that is true. We, because you guys put in a big solar grid, didn't you? We did. Um, we participate in a lot of the things that the town suggests. And one of them was solarized East Grant. And we said, sign us up. So we put in a one megawatt yes, solar farm. Uh, over to um, left, right? Got a picture, picture coming. Just, there we go. Right. Oh, nice. Yeah, so, so they can run the mill with the power that they generate. Yes, that, awesome. that's solar. a one megawatt. Um, facility, and the best way that I can describe it to somebody just who knows what megawatts are, really, um, in in electrical power, it's we save forty thousand dollars a month. So if you take your home electric bill and you divide it by forty thousand, you could say we're powering this many homes in East Grand with that solar. But you're powering the mill. Well, we are. We lot. we are. We are powering the mill, and in the in the winter time, it. It takes care of 100% of our needs. In the summertime, it takes care of probably 35% of our needs. We are energy intensive. In the um, but putting in that solar panel really took a lot of the burden off the grid in East Grand. In fact, we had a lot of comments from the folks down in the industrial part that, you know, because our, our power hasn't always been really that reliable. Here. Right. And they were happy that we did it because we were taking that much power out of, it, out of the grid. So, yeah, we did Solarize East Granby. We participated in the Beetle Project uh, just a week, uh, about a year or two ago, where we're, they were trying to save the ash trees, I believe, on off Metacomet Trail. So we sponsored some of that. Um, you know, we really try to be interactive with the town. Yeah. Hi, John. I'll say this. I will. Um, having been on permission for too long 20 plus years um, since they opened one card pretty much um and every five years and every interim period when you come in for um, the presentations have been tremendous 
the questions have always been answered. Um, I remember uh, 10, 12 years ago having a wonderful conversation about the box turtle and spotted turtles. Um, but it, it has always been um, questions answered. Um, you, know, you, know, you are a, a good neighbor. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I know we had to overcome some hurdles in 2014 and are committed to doing it. You know, mm -hmm. so, but I really appreciate your comments, John. Anybody else? Well, that's Jason Patry over there. So if you want a quality tour, come up with him at the end of the meeting and um, push the button if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> really taking the shirt off. Um, I guess we can open up to public comment. If anybody wants to speak for or against anything. Okay, seeing that there are none. Um, can I have a motion to close public hearing? A uh, real quick. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. That's right. Yes, it's getting late, but um, just for to get hungry. I know you are. You're getting hangry over there. Mm -hmm. I understand. Um, so our regulations for the five-year renewal, just um, the two bullet points that it does call for, is a report from a certified engineer that the excavation completed conforms with the approved plan, uh, which we do have in the record, and a new site five-year projection, uh, projection plan, which we also have. Um, both uh, Tom and I started meeting with them in April to, first of all, get me up to speed. I wasn't obviously here for 2014. Um, and so they were kind enough to do that um, and obviously kind enough to um, bring their restoration plans to put into this current one so that it does carry over in the future. If you guys aren't here and I'm not here, that it's clear that that restoration plan from 2014 um, was made part of this record. So. Um, they did meet all of the plan comments from the town engineer and myself. We both have um, recommended conditions of approval, um, and um, I think we got our newest rec recommendations from the town engineer today, and that they should have been part of your package. So just wanted to make sure that got put on the record. Now you can close the public hearing. Okay. Now, can I get a motion to... Close the public hearing. Any motion? Thank you. All those in favor? Close. Okay. Now, where are we? Number three. Um, uh, does anybody have any comment or question or anything on any of the non agenda items? Is that for public? Uh, yeah, yes. Right, okay. Go for it. Well, what do you want to tell range? Uh, this is not an agenda item because I haven't heard anything in closely known around the town hall a lot. I recently watched some uh, GCTV uh, from Brandon Kennedy, and they had a joint presentation of all their three boards by the solar company that's going to be building the large solar park which is partially in each grant. So my question to you or to the staff is, what contact and what information have you received from the solar farm project? I forget the actual name, but the dumps. Have we had any contact with them at all? The only contact we've had with them was from back in January when they were trying to schedule something here in East Granby. Um, they decided they wanted to start in Granby first, so they never followed up or followed through. I would anticipate since they've done their presentation in Granby that we'll be hearing from them shortly to do their presentation in East Granby. So a major part of that project is going to be located yes. within East Granby. A majority of it will be in East Granby. Um, it is not subject to local zoning approval. I understand. It will go to Pura Where's and the Siting Council. The Siting Council. No, no, where's the solar farm going to be? Yeah, no, Monrovia property. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that one. Okay, okay. okay. Um, but so they will be know. doing public presentations. That's just not something that they've contacted us to set up yet. Okay. Yeah. So you are in contact? 
is going to have a big impact. I realize this. They have to do, so just to be clear, they have to do public presentations as part of their siting council application. And to your comment that the state does control it because it's a site plan. Uh, it's the siting site council. Approval, yep. siting council. Uh, they were very cooperative with the Grand Union Joint Boards yeah. in answering any of their concerns and considering any possible modifications as far as blocking and things like that. So I think it is very important that we're uh, It's the biggest project that we're ever going to see here, maybe other than the unnamed 120. Some property that shall not be spoken of. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> I get a motion to approve the minutes. Oh, is there any other public comment on non-agenda items? No public. No, no. Okay. Can I get a motion to accept the minutes from uh, our 312 24 meeting? I'm sorry, you were looking for approval of the minutes? Yes. I would approve the minutes if you All right, I'll second that. Um, Communications. I a vote. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> this book says we don't have to vote on minutes. I know, but okay. All those in favor? Aye. All right. All those. I'm abstaining for the record. I wasn't at the meeting. Okay. Um. Communications. I didn't have any communications. Did you have anything, Robin? Um. So there was no zoning report, no um, site plan approvals, plan report. Um, John did ask about the bias and predisposition just for the record that came from a Canton Joint Land Use Commission training session that was put on by Halloran and Sage. Okay. Um, Scott didn't know if he could pull something together for you guys in time. I told him I had this presentation that my company was involved with um, and I offered to pull out those pieces of information to share with the commission. They're just for informational purposes only, but that is where those came from um, just for the record. Uh, no old business. Before we jump into new business, I need five minutes. Five. Okay. <laughs> Two and a half. Let's see if that works. <laughs> I'm sure we'll see him. I think that on he's like on TV all the time. Oh, I'm sorry. 
You haven't voted yet. Okay, we're back. I have to do those 15 minutes to get home. Oh. I need an autopilot car. Enjoy. I'll see you again. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I say back. Okay. Put yourself in that spot. We are on. Okay, so we're on uh, a motion to accept application 2405 for sweat equity as a text amendment. <clears throat> of section B D two or five D two for these gravity resolutions to allow permitted use of indoor sports facility and self storage. Uh, I get a motion for that. Someone? Anyone? I don't know what the motion for discussion or no. <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve application 2405 for equity for the text amendment to section uh, 5D2 of the East Bay Regulations to allow permitted use of indoor facility and self storage facility. Um, caveat. Can I get a second? I'll second. Okay. Discussion. You have to put in there, John. But, um, You're going to want to withdraw. And I could ask the town planner perhaps to draft something, but then motion along with 20. Properties along with 20. So I think everyone was in agreement, not along uh, Route 20 or State sure. Highway. Yeah. Um, and we did not agree on the five acre minimum. So that was not part of the conversation. That was what I have in my notes just to confirm. Mm -hmm. um, so I would do a motion to approve application 2405 text amendment to section BD2 to allow indoor recreational sports training facilities and indoor self storage facilities in the Commerce Park transitional zone subject to not being on a state highway. That would be your motion. That would be a motion I would make. Yes. Verbatim. Seconding. Okay. Any discussion on that? No further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, let's jump into application 2406. Make a motion 2406 to approve um, special permit site plan approval. Brown with the circle, in other words, the uh, Brown circle and the old Deerfield circle. circle. I don't think we have anything else to add to that. A second. If I may. With the conditions that what can the conditions you? of approval from um, yeah. both yeah. my my memorandum and the town engineers. Right. Uh, any other discussion on that? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? <clears throat> Uh, Todd, you're sitting on this one. Oh, I'm sorry. No, um, Austin. Austin, Austin. Yeah. Uh, can I get a motion to approve application 2407? We want to. Give me a moment. I'll make yes. a motion. Yeah. 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 On that one. Two hundred. And 150 feet to property line of residential zone. Maximum of three, three. drive-through zone, one parcel. Type. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion. Uh, 
application. I'm sorry. Application. 407. 407, text amendment to section 5D5. Drive through establishment type A. We go bullet point on this. Minimum acreage of five acres. No more than one per five acres. 25% of the total ground floor area of all the property. And just any changes. Six hundred feet from serving window one to the other. Two hundred and fifty feet from the residential zone. Serving window as stated. One serve uh, one window serving food, one vehicle for service lane as presented as stated. Uh, no outside audio system as stated. And then the last one there. Visibility problems, motorists, pedestrians. I don't even know if we need that, but with a maximum of two per, per site. That's the motion I'll make. I'd like to amend that motion to be a maximum of three. I made the motion of two. Someone want to second that? I second that. Yep. I second that. I would maybe recommend you guys discuss before you throw amendments on the floor to see how everyone else feels about yeah. the two. So, um, I think I'd like to see go to three, just to not find anybody and looking at the the lay of that land and how it would go together. It'd have to be pretty far apart, mm -hmm. and I don't think that they're going to really be impeding on anything. Um, I think that makes it a little bit easier for them to make it attractive to get somebody in and start the ball rolling in that area. Whatever. I'm just want. Wait, I agree. Additional comment. See what other people think. Is everybody okay with that, or do you want to make a change? <clears throat> Call the question on two to go down. Um, I think we'll just go for three right out of the shoot. Do I have to redo the whole motion all over again? Or? I would have to no. call my motion. Yeah. I think it's, it's our bad, the is everybody else saying three? Are the majority saying three? three? Who's saying two? Who's saying three? Three. 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 Yeah, three. Austin? Are we just going to call it the question? Like, that's basically the. Two or three? Are you indifferent? You can be indifferent. Can I be indifferent? You, you absolutely can. Okay. So it, it looks like there's. I withdraw my motion. Okay. Okay. I would. Uh, John's motion entirely in just to save time is the only change being a maximum of three rather than two. Second. Second. All those in favor? Discussion. Okay. More discussion? <clears throat> Does anybody have a hamburger? I just think for discussion purposes, I'll say that I would have gladly voted in the affirmative if it was max of tip. Thank you. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Okay. Um, we're on. 2408. Can I get a. Uh, <laughs> what was that? Part of their text amendment was for the type A. Yeah. Or hold on. John, John said no. 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 They also wanted to modify. Yep, they wanted to modify. Yep. 
um, modify section BD2F to do permitted uses to so read retail and personal service establishments. You didn't say 2F? No. No. He said 5F. He very specifically said 5F. Yeah, no, I yeah. The second one. Yeah, I right. So you guys, I you're going to have to make another motion specific right. to. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve BD2F. Text a minute. Text a minute. Change. A second motion. All those in favor? Discussion. 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 So, my comment would be it was not an intentional omission. Right. Okay. All those okay. in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you. Thanks, Carl. Good catch, Carl. Uh, okay. I still have a standing question. Does anybody have a hamburger? I'm bringing you crackers for the next long meeting. Keep going. We're almost done. Um, can I get a, um, a motion to approve 2408? Yeah. Motion to approve application 2408. Gloss Materials LLC for a five year special permit renewal and amendment to the excavation area and depth quarry excavation activities. Uh, the conditions outlined by the town planner. I'll second that. And town engineer. And town engineer. It's incorporated into mine, but yeah. For the record, anything about the restoration plan? I'll second. Second. For the record, to include the restoration plan from 2014. Okay. Yeah, that's number one. 4.1. <clears throat> Any discussion on that? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Yes. Okay. Where are we? Russell Rose. Um, is there a motion to approve 24? We haven't. This we is haven't just a site plan approval. Plan. It was it's not like subject to oh, okay. uh, special permit. Yeah, so they're going to do a very brief presentation. Okay. Um, they have a hamburger? <laughs> <laughs> There's no hamburgers here, Tom. You're fasting tonight, Tom. Another Jolly Rancher. Fasting. Do you want a Jolly Rancher? Yes, please. There's a kitchen. Go look at the refrigerator. I don't know if I would eat anything as much. My name is T.J. Baresi. I'm a licensed engineer in and engineer and hamster bear. It's full of Baresi Associates in Windsor. And I'm representing Russell Road Associates LLC regarding 38 Russell Road. Application for modification to improve site plan for you. The applicant is proposing to construct the third and last building of an industrial site plan. Site plan was approved for three buildings in 2005. Second building was constructed in 2019, proposing this last building today. Parcel is located in the CPA zone, contains 11.134 acres, situated on the southern side of Russell Road, immediately west of 46 Russell Road. Property is partially developed with two small industrial office buildings related parking and infrastructure. Westerly portion was recently developed with a trailer parking area. Southerly portion remains undeveloped with mature woods. Water buttons on the property they exist along the southerly and westerly portions of the property. A total of 2.3 acres of wetland soils on the property. Topographically, the developed portion of the site is managed with a formal drainage system. The undeveloped portion drains naturally in a southerly direction away from the existing buildings. The westerly portion slopes away from Russell Road. The new facilities are accessed off Russell Road, as will the new building. Couple numbers for you total building coverage, existing and proposed, 20,044 or 4.2%. Impervious coverage, existing and proposed, is 95,059 or 19.7%. Applicant is proposing a new building southwest of the existing buildings. Existing building, existing building, is a new building it wants to put up 90 feet by 90 feet for a total of 80 to 100 square feet. That pedestrian access in front, loading back to the rear. Parking lot access is accessed out across the road by the existing two way driveway. As I said, parking will be in front, loading and ramp access in the rear. Building served by private well and septic, all of the utilities will be underground. No zoning violations with respect to the building location, meet all the parking requirements, landscape trees and plantings are shown throughout as existing and proposed, side lighting is shown throughout as existing and proposed. Stormwater from the existing developed area 
is managed by an existing formal draining system with infiltration. Majority of the stormwater runoff generated by the new building and paved areas will be collected and managed by a new four bay detention basin. Detention basin will have a cap 12 inch diameter HTP outlet with an orifice to control the way to flow out. This will allow us to change from both sediment collection and infiltration. As an emergency overflow rear to protect against the possibility of stormwater backing up into the full floating area. Basin capacity, overflow elevation, water quality treatment, all properly designed for 100 year storms. Stormwater management submitted to the town engineer that we uh, received as approval. Joe Road controls throughout, CE pads, so fence, things of that nature. Uh, turf reinforcement maps, mats for any slopes created on a grader. Construction sequence revised to stress and focus on proper erosion controls during the construction process, including a TSD uh, at the engineer's request. Uh, notes on the plans regarding stabilization of all disturbed areas uh, from construction prior to removal of the erosion controls. There's an inspection and maintenance notes listed for post construction to assure the drainage system continues to function properly beyond construction phase. Since our submission, we received approval from the weapons last week. Um, to Valley gave their approval. Uh, we received comments from the town engineer and town planner last week of May. That's the majority of those comments. We the follow up memo from the planner uh, and the town engineer uh, just in the last week, beginning this week. And I've submitted uh, some revised plans regarding the, the planner's comments, an addendum regarding the town engineer's comments. Now I'll uh, distribute those. Those aren't in your set. Those are just done yesterday and today. I also provided a, a response letter so they can clearly see everything was addressed, where it was addressed, and how we can find it out. Oh, yeah. Most of Robin's comments uh, were related to landscaping, uh, site lighting, and its uh, dumpster pad. So those are all shown on the plan. Uh, there's uh, calculations of the plan regarding the landscape, uh, the amount of vegetation that exists. Uh, a land bit of site inventory of the existing trees, existing shrubs. All those are quantified along with the proposed trees, proposed shrubs, and uh, totals of other uses. Uh, town engineer comments were all relating to the any parking regarding the massive requirements for ADA. I thought I had that correct, but there's a couple areas. I had to adjust. Those were sent to him today. Uh, and he did provide a letter uh, late in the afternoon, uh, approving all the changes. He responded to all town comments. Uh, feel the proposal consistent with the original plan and revision. That you just handed us from time to year. Yes. This is now been addressed. Yes, this is Tom's right. latest and greatest thing to ADA. Yes. Yep. 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 Motion with reference to those conditions of approval. There is here that we Yeah, 
We're looking at a site aerial just so. It was just this map from above. Um, so we are looking for a motion here, yeah? Do I think, does the commission have any questions of the applicant? Or? Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Obviously, with all of the revisions, he now meets all of our site Before, requirements yeah. um, with the additional information regarding the landscaping, the, the garbage dumpster proposal, um, the fixing of the ADA. Um, so it meets all of our site plan requirements. Anybody have any questions, comments, hamburgers? <laughs> Um, can I get a motion? I go ahead to make a motion. You're saying that any conditions that you and Mr. Grimaldi have are in fact have now been incorporated. Mm -hmm. So that I could make a motion to approve application 24 on my Russell Road Associates LLC property at 30 at Russell Road. I'll second that. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motions? Can I get a motion for approval, please? I'll make that motion. I'll second that. Oh, oh. 